Drive. Brooke here alongside Danny Mac. Randy Carricker is out for the rest of the week. He is in Arizona enjoying himself. I haven't looked at the weather in Arizona, but I'm assuming he's getting a lot of golfing in, some spring training games. So, And the burger. He kept bringing up this burger, Dan. <laughs> I'm sure he's really enjoying that burger. How many times do you think he's had that burger Multiple. this week? Okay. Multiple times, yes. He is a food connoisseur, as we know. <laughs> so if there's a burger place, he's going to find it and he's going to eat it. I will say I did have In-N-Out one day, and that was absolutely delicious. What did you think? I loved it. Yeah? I loved it. It's I a know big that deal when you go out west. you got to have an In-N-Out burger. I feel like you have to even if you have been dieting. So hopefully my personal trainer's not listening to this. It was a little treat. It was a little reward for my bachelorette party. But <laughs> I'm sure that Randy's having a lot of fun down there today. So let's get into some college basketball. Last night, Mizzou basketball in the SEC tournament, falling to Georgia 64-59. to It was a tight game down the stretch, but... Much like the season, it was a letdown in the end. Just thankful. Thankful it's over. Move on to next year. I think I speak for uh, most Missouri fans that are saying, okay, that's the one-off that you get. Yep. And next year, it better be a lot better than what we saw this year. Can't get any worse. You didn't win a game in not. the SEC. <laughs> so can't get any worse. <laughs> that's the thing is that you end with no wins within your conference. Is there? When is the last time that that's even happened? Oh, it's been a few years ago, but it has happened, and it's happened across the board in college basketball. Um, so it does happen. It's just like we said, a one-off, hopefully, because you know what? The, the Missouri Tigers are in a select company when you – uh, don't win a game mm -hmm. and with what they have coming next year with an incoming class it's pretty good we'll see what they do in the transfer portal so chance to turn it around next year and the Billikens last night in the A-10 tournament facing off against Duquesne and the Billikens losing in the A-10 tournament 83 to 73 the final score it also marks the end of an era for the Billikens with the announcement that they are moving on from head coach Travis Ford so let me just break this down for you and how things went the game ended and then Travis Ford held at his press conference I know that Martin Kilcoyne was the first to report that they were moving on from Travis Ford, but it wasn't announced until after the press conference. But here's what Travis Ford was saying in the press conference. Oh, but I will say I've, um, I've loved my time in St. Louis. Absolutely loved it. Uh, my kids would call it home. Um, it's maybe where I call home. Um, and... Um, the fans have been tremendous. I love the fan base. Absolutely. Just uh, love the fan base. And obviously the critics are always the loudest. I've been doing this a long time. When you play at Kentucky and you've been through the career I've had for 27 years, you kind of get that and understand it a little bit. And I said, oh, you know, you hear the critics, but I can't tell you how many fans have emailed me and how many supporters of ours uh, of the program have texted me over the last couple of days. And that means the world to me. That means more to me than anything else, because sometimes it's all about the negativity. Uh, it seems like yesterday I was at Campbellsville University 27 years ago as a young head coach. Um, boy, does time fly. And uh, I've enjoyed my career. I've enjoyed it. Uh, but 27 years is a long time. And uh, now you know, I'm good with that. I'm good with those 27 years and uh, with the relationships I've built and the games we've won and the programs I've taken over. Um, I'm good. I'm good from that standpoint. 27 years, eight seasons with the Billikens, and it's coming to an end. And it comes to a tough end for Travis Ford. I just want to say personally, from the media perspective of things, that he's always made himself super available. He's always been very kind and has done a lot for the St. Louis community. But it seems like things always come to an end when it comes to college basketball, especially with all the changes that we've seen with NIL and the transfer portal. I hate it when guys get fired, especially mm -hmm. guys that you like and respect. And I really do. You said it very well with what he did with the media. Uh, I did the games for a number of years. And he was always accommodating to us, always accommodating to me personally. Just hate it when guys get fired, the good guys in the in the sport. Now you turn the page and you think, who are some of the names that are out there that SLU could get? Number one on my list was Chris Mack. He was fired at Louisville, but 215 and 97 at Xavier went to eight tournaments in nine years. You look at the Missouri Valley Conference, maybe a Darren DeVries, who was at Drake, at least 20 wins all six years at Drake. And then the, the wild card, if it is a wild card here, and I know a lot of schools will take a hard look at Josh Schertz at Indiana mm -hmm. State, three years, 
62 and 39, which is kind of an outpost Indiana State in the Missouri Valley Conference. He also took over Division II Lincoln Mor uh, Memorial, which was one of the worst in D2, and turned it into a powerhouse. They say he's an X's and O's savant, so those are just some of the names off the, the top of my head that Slew will look at. Going back to Travis just for a moment, what really hurt him, in my opinion, was 2020. Hurt a lot of people. The pandemic hit, but he had a very good team that was built to go to the NCAA tournament, and if he gets in, I'm not sure we're having this conversation today. Yes, yeah, I, I totally agree. It's amazing how much things have changed, and if that would have happened, he probably would still have had a job. I think so. Uh, 2020, he went to one NCAA tournament, but the team that he had was some studs, and he recruited those kids, got them in. I wonder what's going to happen with Travis in terms of moving forward 27 years and how the game has changed from when he started to what he's doing now. Mm -hmm. You know, NIL, and we see that the, the transfer portal has become a pain in the butt for these guys. He's made a ton of money, and he might just say, you know what? The heck with it. I'm going to go do some TV. I'm going to live in St. Louis. I raise my kids here, and this is a good place to live, which you wouldn't blame him if that's what he decided to do. No, and that's what it kind of sounded like to me in that press conference is that he was not only just saying goodbye to the Billikens fans, but also to college basketball in general. And you're invested in the town. You know, his family's invested here. They've done a lot of charitable work. Um, he's so respected across college basketball from the other coaches to the players that played for him. He sent some guys to the NBA. So uh, if you're waking up this morning, you're a SLU fan and a Travis fan, it's a, it's a tough morning, no doubt. So if you are the Billikens, what is your checklist? Just maybe the top three of what you're looking for. I know that you mentioned some names, but what specifically are you looking for in that next head coach? NIL, transfer portal, canny coach. I'm just looking at those three things, and probably the two out of the three at the top would be NIL and transfer portal and getting involved and, and seeing just how good that guy has been in the past and moving forward in conjunction with boosters, in conjunction with the school, and making sure you're getting players. It's about the Jimmys and Joes and not the X's and the O's, so get me some players. <laughs> Isn't it amazing how much, just based off of your checklist, I totally agree with you on that, that it shows you how much college basketball has changed. It's really about recruiting, of course, have, has always been a big part of it but now it's nil and the way you recruit with that yeah and you can change it fast you know you can change this thing pretty quickly by bringing in a class that is getting the money that you want i mean what nick saban said yesterday about he and his wife bringing in recruits and and their families for breakfast and instead of asking them meaning the parents or even the player how are you going to develop me it was all about how much money can you get me mm -hmm. and whether you like it or not that's NCAA sports today. Yeah, pay to play. Pay to play. That's what it is. Well, the Blues last night with a victory. What is going on with this Blues team right now? They were able to beat the Kings 3-1 to one last night to kick off their four-game homestand. And also, they are now within six points. Six points of a playoff spot. But can they pull it off? And I think a big reason, and we've talked about this over and over again, about why they can pull it off is because of Jordan Bennington with another dazzling performance between the pipes. 40 saves. And it seems like, Dan, he's doing everything he can to just drag this team into the playoffs. He's been so good. 40 saves, as you mentioned, including one without his stick in the third period. <laughs> I, I thought the Blues didn't really have their legs coming off a long trip in the first 10 minutes. You could just see that. L.A. came out with a lot of jump. But as you uh, talked about, 16 games remaining within six points of both L.A. and Vegas. They have played one more game than both those teams. One of the things to consider is that 10 of the 16 are at home. And the goaltending combination has been so good. Right now, Hofer and Ben. 5-on-5 five five are ninth in the league. In those high danger situations, they are ninth in the league. That's given them a chance to win. And Bennington, when you think about what he's done since January 1st, he has a 2.35 goals against average. You'll take that. A 928 save percentage. And it's hard to believe for me, but that was win number 140 for him. He's third all time. And he's going to catch number one. Mike Liut is number one at 151. And Jake Allen at 148. So he's at 140 and he's put together a great year for the Blues and given them a chance to get in the playoffs. I think that all fans are very appreciative for Jordan Bennington and what he's been able to do. But I think something else that you're seeing right now with the Blues is the secondary scoring. You have Kevin Hayes the other day, of course, he was a big part of that third line in the Boston game. And then you had scoring last night from Saad again, Torbchenko and Jake Neighbors. Jake Neighbors, I think quickly, if not already, is becoming one of my favorites on this team. Mine too. And I love Torbchenko. 
Francisco. I just love when he comes all over the boards and it's like a torpedo coming at you. He, <laughs> it he is. is. He just gives you everything he's got. I love it. He scored from 59 feet away last night. So he's got 13 goals on the season. That's more than his first two seasons combined. You mentioned Jake Neighbors and the young players are getting playoff type experience. This is big down the stretch. Every game's important. Every game's like a playoff game. You got Jake Neighbors, Torpchenko, Zach Bolduke, Matthew Kessel, Scott Perunovic. So these are players that are getting that, that experience here down the stretch regardless of what happens. And by the way, Matthew Kessel yesterday signing a two-year one-way contract worth one $1.6 million with the Blues. This was the right thing to do. Love that kid. I do too. When he first came up, he was playing meaningful minutes. He was getting a lot of minutes, like 16, 17 a game. So it's a one-way contract. So he's going to get his money and it makes a lot of sense. It really does. I think that he's going to be a very important part moving forward. At least he has proved himself. Let's see what he does now moving forward for the Blues. Absolutely. And the Cardinals yesterday with a 1-1 tie, which feels illegal, but you know, it is spring <laughs> training. Every time I see that with the I'm like, this is it soccer. What are we doing here? But the Cardinals ending in a 1-1 tie with the Twins. The big story yesterday is Zach Thompson, who is vying for either that spot in the rotation, depending on what happens with Sonny Gray, or I think he should be a part of the starting rotation in general. But it was a great performance for him, tossing four innings without allowing a hit. Now, he did the only base runner that he allowed came on a walk. He finished with five strikeouts. Dan, right now, during spring training in 12 innings, he's only allowed five hits and four walks while fans. 11. I like everything that's that that good. Is that yeah, good? I think that's it is pretty good. good. That's yeah. pretty good. I, I'm I'm with you. I, I love Zach Thompson. I've been saying that since the day he arrived and made his debut at Wrigley Field coming out of the bullpen. By the way, he grew up a Cubs fan, so don't hold that against Did him. Did he really? He it, Yeah, and he made his debut at uh, in uh, Wrigley Field. But after what happened last year where, he, he, you know, he's okay, starter, now we're going to, or reliever, now we're going to make him a starter, and then he comes back and relieves, and then he gets some spot starts. Now he starts this one clean. He starts this year fresh. And today is a big day for the Cardinals. Sonny Gray is going to throw. So see how he comes out of that. And if it's a six-man rotation, is he in the top five? I think he is. I'd put Libertor in the bullpen and uh, see what this young man's got. Doesn't Zach Thompson, in the way that he's been performing this spring, though, make you feel a little bit more comfortable with things that are going on? Because, of course, you don't want to see Sonny Gray injured. But we all knew going in that it was going to be very mild. It was good to me to see that Zach Thompson can fill a spot in the starting rotation. They've invested $99 million in Sonny Gray, Lance Lynn, Kyle Gibson, Miles Michaelis, and the ages are like, whoa. Gray is 34, <laughs> Michael is 35, Gibson's 36, Lance Lynn is 37. So when you hear those ages, you would just think, even though majority of those guys have stayed healthy, you're thinking, man, at some point you're going to have to dip into the Zach Thompson, the Matthew Libertors, maybe some of the other guys that will be stretched out at AAA, but again, a big start for Sonny Gray coming up today. And with Sonny Gray, too, as I mentioned, this is a very mild injury. If you look around across the league, we know what's going on with Garrett Cole and the Yankees. He's going to be out for a while. And then you have Devin Williams, the Brewer star, who has two stress, stress fractures in his back and is expected to miss three months. I think the Cardinals, when you're talking about mild injuries, at least if you want to feel a little bit better about yourself, you can look around and see that. And the San Diego Padres, if you missed it, they if because people were talking about go get Dylan Cease, go get Dylan Cease. I thought Dylan he was going to go to the Yankees because of Garrett Cole. I did too and uh, you Darvish now in that rotation Joe Musgrove and remember the Cardinals will face them in the second series of the year but you Darvish Joe Musgrove Dylan Cease Michael King and Matt Waldron that's gonna be a pretty good rotation and a pretty good team the Cardinals will get a test with in the uh, second series of the year and I want to touch on this a little bit later because of course once you see what the trade was with the White Sox and the Padres a lot of people of course are trying to figure out the comp between the Cardinals and throw Drew, Drew Thorpe was the big centerpiece of that trade with the White Sox and Padres. I was trying to figure out who would be the comp for the Cardinals, but I don't know if there would be one. Probably a top young prospect of some sort. You know, one yeah. of the Cardinals' young pitching stars that they feel are going to be very good in the major leagues. So that would be probably the comp for me. You would have maybe a Tink Hintz, Takoa Roby, Drew Rom, a Chase Davis in comparison to what they were able to trade. Yeah, all Maybe those names. Maybe even more. Yeah, all those names would be involved in that. And the Padres wheel and deal. I mean, that guy, A.J. Yeah. Preller, 
he is not hesitant whatsoever to trade prospects, to trade top players, to get rid of Juan Soto, to clear out payroll in his final year of uh, his contract and goes to the Yankees. So A.J. Prowler, man, he is wheeling and dealing, and Mike Schilt will have a pretty good rotation going into 24. Yeah, and by the way, the Cardinals will be facing the Dodgers and then the Padres, so it'll be very interesting to see how that shakes out. We are off and running this morning. We have a great show for you today. We have Hall of Famer Bernie Federko. We also have City SC's Tim Parker, and we're going to talk to Jeremy Rutherford about the Blues push for the playoffs. But coming up next, we have – I can never do it as well Sick as Randy does. Sick of it. That's coming up next here on the opening drive. Welcome back to the opening drive. Brooke, Dan, and Rock here. And it is now time for 
sick of it. So get in your text to the Air Comfort Service text line. That is 314-399-9646. 314-399-YO-HO for you're sick of it to, for the day. So, Dan, why don't you kick it off for us? So last night was kind of a cool night at uh, Enterprise Center. They had referee appreciation night. And even at one point, the crowd is chanting, let, chanting let's go refs, which I thought was pretty cool. I'm sick. It made me think of this. I'm sick of parents berating youth sports referees. It just drives me crazy. These poor kids are probably making 10 bucks a game. They go out and the parents think that little Johnny is the next star in NBA or <laughs> soccer or they're whatever, not. baseball. No, they're not going to be. Although I would never ever disparage someone from trying to be that kid or that professional athlete. I, you know, throw the carrot out there and get as good as you can, but it drives me crazy. It does. I, I watched a, a game one time watching my son play and the referee was getting berated by the opposing team so much so that he just walked off the field. He just said, I'm done. That was it. He was a soccer match and he just said, I'm done and walked off the field. Game was over. That's crazy because also they don't get paid a lot for this. And saying, sometimes like they don't even get game. paid. Yeah. You know, and especially if you're starting out, I've heard stories of usually you're volunteering just so you could work your way up a little bit more. But not too long ago, I did a story about how it's so hard to find refs now because of that, because of what you're speaking of. And I do understand it gets frustrating. You see your kid get in trouble. You want to go and stand up for him. But there's a little bit of a difference when it's in a game situation. You don't have to go and yell at the ref. There's a way that you can ha you can handle it a little bit better. I find it really hard watching parents get on their kids, too. I yeah. that That is tough for me. When I show up at a game, I just kind of sit away from the parents i watch i mind my own business there are things that i watch on the field that i am like man that's a terrible call but i'm not going to sit there and yell at the, the referee and i sometimes look at one of my sons and i say eh, that wasn't a very good play but after we're done i just say you want to go get an ice cream what do you you want to go get some uh, food you know i i just don't it's you sports. It just drives me crazy. And I'm sick of it. Think about how much pressure it puts on the kids, too. Like you were talking about, they know that. They can hear their parents, and they see their parents like, oh, all right, there goes dad again, yes. yelling at the ref. And then they get embarrassed, and maybe it could also have the opposite effect of what that parent would want, which is them being in the sport. It can make them not want to be in the sport anymore. Absolutely. Some of these kids, it's like, I'm burnt, and you play so many games now. Too many, in my opinion, but they play so many games and the sports are isolated to one sport. I wish my kids played more than the, the, what they do. They started that way as, as young kids and then gravitated towards just one sport. But I think it's just a good thing to play as many sports as you can. I think so, too. If you talk to and you, of course, have talked to many great athletes, the majority of them played multiple sports growing up. And they all say... Their advice to other parents is, little Johnny, it's going to be tough for him to be a major league player, NBA, major league baseball. Don't don't try to stop them from their dreams, and I agree with that. But it's going to be really, really tough to do. So play multiple sports, and they all say, make sure your kid enjoys it. Has a mm -hmm. smile on their face. Little Susie, little Johnny, make sure they enjoy it and have fun. Heck, I mean, even the players have to remind themselves that at this at the major league level. They, they really do. That they almost have to just simplify it. How many times do you hear them say, simplify it, get back to playing like how you were when you were younger. Have fun with it. And the on the 1st and the 15th, they really love the sport they play because that's when they get paid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the paychecks are pretty good on the 1st and the 15th. What are you sick of? This is what I'm sick of, Dan. So as we know, I went down on my bachelorette party. A lot of different things happened. I explained the first thing that happened, which was a trip to the ER. Luckily, she's completely fine. I know, Dan, this trip sounds ab absolutely insane when I tell this story, but it was a lot of fun. I promise you it was a lot of fun. Now, I will say one of my friends, and she's completely fine with me sharing the story. Uh, uh, the thing is, is that she has a very overbearing partner a very overbearing husband and so that's what i'm sick of my fiance is said he would check in with me every once in a while and it would just be fun and i've been in relationships like that in the past where it felt like i couldn't do anything without telling him giving him a rundown of every single thing that i was doing so if you're out there i hope that you have a partner that you have complete trust in because what's the point of being in a relationship whether it's boyfriend or girlfriend or married or engaged what is the point of being in a relationship with someone if you can't give them full trust 
trust. Dan, you talked about how you have the Life 360 app. Yeah. I know some couples who have that on their own partners. Why are you with that person? <laughs> right. If, they, if they've cheated on you in the past and you guys haven't been able to work it out, maybe you shouldn't be together anymore. Now, said partner in your group, um, would he admit that he's overbearing? Uh I would think so, considering that he apologized. Okay. So he did apologize. That's fantastic that he did that. But it was a little bit too much. He he got really upset that he could not get in contact with her or know what she was doing. I'm not kidding, Dan. Every single moment of the trip. Southampton Barber says, what if the referee is Angel Hernandez? Well, that's a good point. If it's Angel Hernandez, maybe I'd yell. <laughs> that's, a, that's a little bit different somebody said from the three and four preach bg i'm just saying and look yeah. i know that every situation is different so i'm not saying that every relationship is perfect but do you agree do you think what's the point if you have to track somebody like that that's overbearing what's the point the, what's the Monitoring point is right. their text messages all that no different. way yes mm -hmm. the text me the, your phone is Yours. Yeah. Nobody else's. You also, should be they're able to, adults. Yes, you should be able to do what you want on your phone. You, I spend way too much time on certain things on my phone that I... So, for instance, yesterday I was playing golf with a couple of buddies of mine, and we bo we all talked about it afterwards. We said, isn't it great that we went on the course and weren't checking our phones? I'm, I'm yeah. not addicted to my phone, but I always have it by me, mostly because of my kids. I just want to make sure that they're okay, and if they're trying to get a hold of me, if my wife's trying to get a hold of me, then I'm making sure that I have my phone with me. But it was so nice for three and a half hours not to look at my phone. I'm the same way. I would love to go back to the landline days. <laughs> I'm I serious. Am, I wonder who has I a, land loan, a landline my anymore. Parents. Do they really? Yeah. <laughs> I think my they, they mom still it. does, too. Yeah, they still have their landline, and I still call them on their landline. 314 says, yeah, that relationship ain't going to last. No, not whatsoever. What do we have on the text line, Rock? I would hate having to go back to landlines. Oh, my gosh. Why? Times, you know how many times when I was a little kid that I was just like, can I just, where's a cell phone so I can call my parents? I'm tired of waiting for them for an hour to pick me up. <laughs> Being a little kid without without cell phones was the worst thing in the late 90s, early 2000s. When, when cell phones were just like one person had them, but no, but it, they weren't but prevalent yet. they weren't yet. nice it was, the, it was the Nokia. Remember yeah. that Nokia brick? Okay. Oh, yeah. Go back to that. That's that's an argument I might be able to get behind, but I'm not going back to landlines. God, no. Oh, my God. The worst it thing It is harder world. to be a kid oh, right worst. now. It's harder to be a kid than it ever has been. I think it's easier yeah. in some ways, too, though. No. Do you have kids? No. Okay. But I've played a Nintendo Switch before. Okay. I'm just saying. Sick of these halogen headlights they keep putting in new cars. These things will burn your retinas faster than a direct stare into the sun. So you were telling me, Brooke, these are, this is like having your lights on bright. Yes. Okay. So that's the way I need to look at it. Yes. Okay. And I know exactly what they're talking about because... I think everybody has. You're driving all of a sudden. You're like, oh, my God, what is that? <laughs> and they just hill. blind you. Yeah. Or if they're driving behind you and then oh, it's just, oh, it's the worst. So the 314 says being overbearing sounds like it would be so exhausting. Does that guy like being stressed out or what? I think so. Ain't nobody got time for that. No 100%. one got time for that, dog. Ain't nobody got time for that. There is some people that <laughs> I no. do believe like to constantly put themselves in a state of stress, whether they realize it or not. Probably That's right. Probably <laughs> right. So. I'm sick of the state of college basketball in Missouri. Yeah, not great. It isn't great. It's uh, been tough, but you know what? Changes on the horizon, obviously, with SLU. And if you're just joining us, Travis Ford was relieved of his duties after last night's loss for SLU. And Mizzou lost, and they went winless in the SEC. So... Again, it can't get any worse than what we're having right now locally. Mm. In, now, Illinois has been pretty good this year, but locally, not great. Um, not great. No, it's not great. Thank you, Mo. Yeah, thanks, Mo. <laughs> what else you got? Sick of it. I'm sick of these crisscross intersections like 270 in Manchester being built all over town that came, that almost cause head-on crashes daily. Yeah, I'm with this person. The infrastructure, oh, yeah. the way we build streets in this town has to affect the the, the fact that we're such bad drivers. Are like, you living in South City? They have to be correlated. Uh, I'm back in South City, yeah. Okay. Finally. It's not bad Final. there. Yeah, finally. I love South City, love man. South all City. the tight neighborhoods, good mm -hmm. people, I great restaurants. So the parking yeah. does intimidate me, though. I will say that. On a side street? I'm not a great parallel parker, so <laughs> yeah. I mean, for you, me, it's a nightmare. Do you have a backup camera? I do, but it's still, there's oh something gosh. about it. As someone something who, about it. As someone yes. who grew up at you know, 15, 16 years old in South City, 
Backup cameras are the, the, the greatest cheat code in life. It helps. Like, I, no I can get into almost any spot if I, yeah, I have the backup camera. I don't know how camera. I those things are incredible. prior to those. <laughs> Let's see, 314. How's your tires doing? I think it's a better oh, question. Not great. <laughs> Remember the days, call in mom, collect, but instead of saying your name, you say, hey, mom, come get me. Yeah, I remember those days. When I first started doing the blues, I had a calling card. We did not have cell phones at that time. So I'd have to have a calling card. I thought it was the greatest because you'd get to a hotel room. They would charge you for using the phone. So you'd dial like nine to get out, then call the car, use the 1 800 calling card, and then use the actual phone number that you're trying to call. That is how old I am. You guys are young. I'm old. And I didn't think I was that old, but I'm getting, I just feel like I'm getting old. But everything's changed so quickly. They did. They did. Go back to landlines where it was two longs and one short. Hmm. Two longs and one short. Are they talking about like how you had the one that was like in the kitchen that was yes. a little bit of the, okay. And then I remember the longer one because I would call somebody or be on the phone and then my mom would also try to get on the landline. I'm like, mom, I'm on the phone. <laughs> yeah. Wasn't that the worst when it your was. mom or dad picked up? Oh, she would spy on me all the time. And then I'd be talking to someone. I just hear a little giggle in the background. And you're a teenager trying you're to have like, your- Mom, no, you're embarrassing me. Yeah. You're trying to have your <laughs> private uh, conversations. Yeah. With your yes. little boyfriend. That happened all the time. <laughs> Who was probably overbearing at the time. By the way, we're talking about. <laughs> Apparently, uh, people are saying that they're not halogens anymore. They're LEDs and diodes. And the LEDs are even brighter than the halogens used to be. Which makes sense. So these are the new cars have this? I guess so, yeah. Some okay. of them do. Well maybe it's a custom thing you can get in the cars now. That might be that might be it. Okay. You know, people like the people like the Let's get in one more. Oh man, I was gonna Go uh, ahead, Rock, whenever you're ready. Why is there always traffic next to the Brentford exit? It doesn't matter what time of day. And see, well, the if you, Brentwood yes, exit. And see, if you would have listened to uh, my Hildedon when I mentioned that uh, they made 40 worse hold when on, they did the on. construction hold on. Hold on. What's a Hildedon? My Hilda Dion. Oh, Sorry. okay. All right. Oh, you uh, haven't, you you haven't heard, had the pleasure yes. of hearing his Hilda Dion? And oh, one no. of my Hilda Dion was that they actually made 40 worse when they did the construction back in, what was that, 2007, 2008, or 2006, whenever it was. We mean when 40 was closed. Yes. And Brentwood exit is a great example. It got no better. In fact, it might have gotten worse. Always traffic, no matter the time of day. Okay. I don't understand it either. I'm sick of it, too. All right. You're sick of it. I get it. Yeah. Well, you know, Dan, technically, while you haven't heard his Hilda Dion on this show, you kind of hear one every single yeah, day. He gives yeah. you he gives you a Hilda Dion about every single day. I had, I had, a, I had a mini one yesterday. <laughs> what did you have? It was it was that it was that you need to go get a pedicure, Dan. I did have people that were listening to the show yesterday and said, you need to go get a pedicure. So I'm sick of people coming up and telling me I need to go get a pedicure. <laughs> well, that's what happens during the pedicure segment, Dan. Yes. A whole segment dedicated to that. It was quite a segment, that. wasn't it? Yeah, it really was. Do we want to get him one more? Just one more. Sure. And then we'll get out. Um, I'm sick of the Cardinals only signing our older players. Oh. But wait, maybe it's going to benefit them. It could. If you stay healthy, maybe it could. Mm -hmm. We'll find out. Just got to stay healthy and see what happens. Wait and see. Is, yeah. Should that be the motto for the Cardinals this oh, season? Jesus. I think it would be like every team in the league that it's got issues yeah. going into a season. It's like, wait and see. Just see what happens. And, let's yep. see what happens. <laughs> Flag <laughs> day is the real opening day. That's right. See where you're at on that Memorial Day. And then, oh, the trade deadline's here. So see what happens. <laughs> let's wait and see. Well, that's Dan Rock and I'm Brooke. Coming up next, we're going to continue our conversation. Speaking of Cardinals pitchers, we're going to discuss Zach Thompson. Does he deserve and should he deserve a spot in the starting rotation? Plus, Lance Lynn on the mound today. We're going to talk about his leadership that's coming up next here on the opening drive.
This is Rocky with your Sports Center update, driven by Johnny Londoff Chevrolet and Johnny Londoff Autoplex. The Blues with a big win last night over the Kings, three to one. The Kings, one of the teams right above them in the playoff standings, they are currently tied with VGK, six points above the Blues. But right now, the Vegas Golden Knights and the Kings both they have a game in hand on the St. Louis Blues. The Blues, by the way, back in action on Saturday facing off against the Wild. That's a 7 p.m. puck drop. You can catch the pregame show starting here on 101 ESPN at 6 p.m. And also it's a back-to-back over the weekend. So the Ducks then travel to Enterprise on Sunday. That's a 6 p.m. puck drop, which means a 5 p.m. pregame right here on 101 ESPN. Also last night, the Billikens fall out of the A-10 tournament with an 83-73 loss to Duquesne. And also reported after the game... Travis Ford has been let go by the by the St. Louis Billikens. That is your Sports Center update driven by Johnny Londoff. Find your roads and shop 24-7 at Londoff.com and Londoffautoplex.com. Are you kidding me? Welcome back to the opening drive. Brooke, Dan, and Rock here. And it is time for our spring training report. So, a lot going on with the Cardinals. We've talked about Sonny Gray. It looks like he will be throwing a bullpen session. He's at least slated to. And that should at least give the Cardinals some sort of indication of if he's ready or not for opening day. Opening day coming up March 28th against the Dodgers on the road. Now, here's the thing. We discussed this a little bit yesterday, Dan. I'm worried about rushing him a little bit too soon. And it seems like he's saying he's feeling great. He has had prior issues in 2022 with hamstring injuries. And so he knows what his body looks like and what it feels like. But I'm worried about this turning into a bigger issue like it did in 2022, where really injuries hampered him. Yeah, you got to be so careful with this for sure. And I would say the other thing I'd be concerned with is that it's one thing to throw on the side and to do a bullpen. It's another thing with a guy in the box and you get your juices flowing and all of a sudden you, you let it go, you amp it up and you re-injure the hamstring. That would be one of my concerns, but this is positive to see him back on the mound at least for the second time since the injury. Um, and so that, that would be the bright spot. I just get a little concerned when someone is just throwing on the side and not throwing in games. Now, he's a veteran and he knows exactly how his body works works he's 34 he's been in the league it seems like forever and so he'd be able to tone it down if need be but on the side session last time he was only throwing 91 92 Mm -hmm. so you know what he's an intense guy and you would think if there's somebody's in the batter's box he's gonna let it go he's gonna amp it up and that would be one of my concerns by the way i'm looking outside and it is dark and there are clouds moving in we understand that there were some tornado side, uh, sightings in uh, St. Charles. So some of the, or at least, let me sirens, rephrase it, yeah. sirens, not sights. So sirens. So be careful out there. And uh, we're not a weather station, but no. make sure you're uh, you're staying careful and, and safe out there too. I, I was looking at some of the texts that were coming in. Currently driving, can you give an update on tornadoes? I know it's not your usual to do it, but I can't find much and it might be driving, it might be driving into it. As of right now, it is just a tornado warning just a tornado warning and i know that some of the sirens went off i will say dan as you mentioned i'm looking out the window right now and those clouds are moving awfully fast and based of off of how the weather has been lately <laughs> uh with it going from hot to cold and then coldish and then rain that typically is the perfect storm pun intended so um this could be the apocalypse outside oh, the don't way say it, that, dan. <laughs> it looks terrible do we, where, what, do we have an emergency situation here by the way i should have asked that on day one is what do we do if there's tornado we go down with the ship, Brooke. No, no we mm-mm. don't. No, I'm not like the band on the we, Titanic. No, we, yes, we're, Love we're you the guys, Titanic but no. band, 100%. I don't care. No. I think with you being like the great producer you are, we just leave you on the air and then we go under <laughs> some table or something. All right. Yeah, you'll be fine. Do you realize the amount of basketball and and pedicure talk that St. Louis is going to get hit with? Oh, I'm if sure. If we get hit with this tornado, just behind all the tornado, <laughs> it's just me coming right through. And then you play the song in the background like the, the band did. You're like the captain going down with the ship. We really appreciate it because we're going to hop on those little boats and... 
head somewhere into safety. You ready for a transition? Yes, of course. It would be like a tornado, the way that this rotation comes together, and they just, they weather the storm of their age, and they wind up, you know, the league is going to have sirens going off all over the place because this cardinal rotation is going to come through. That was beautiful, Dan. Thank you. That was absolutely beautiful. And as Dan spoke, the heavens opened and a deluge has now fallen upon you. <laughs> wow, it is dark outside, so be careful for sure. It is, uh, yeah, so if you're driving right now, be very, very careful. I wish that we were better at understanding what's going on with weather. Uh, all I know visually, Dan, is this doesn't look great, no. so I would be careful. We're second alert. We are second alert. So first alert, you can go over to one of the other great news channels where they have a lot of people who have degrees in this that can tell you what's going on. And we'll just be around to tell you what they say afterwards, maybe a little bit later on. You're telling me that we're not getting in depth. We both just said clouds are moving really fast and it's dark out. <laughs> Apparently we got kicked off uh, for an EAS alert for, yeah. like, for a tornado uh, warning. So, yeah. Okay. Some people didn't might have not heard us for a minute there, but we were talking about what you were actually learning about, so you didn't miss anything. Okay, good. Somebody from the text line, and we will get back to baseball real quick, but somebody said, please tell Brooke that warning means a tornado was seen, which means conditions exist as the alarm goes across your airwaves. I'm sorry. I don't know. Is that what the... Is it I, a tornado I remember warning? It's, is there's that, warning and watch. I remember one... one uh, news station did a great job of saying, like, I think, like, the warning or a watch is you have the ingredients to a taco, and then the, the warning is there's a taco right in front of you. Yeah, I think, I'm or, sorry. Or it's, or it's vice versa. I'm not sure. I just know that that's, I just know one means everything is correct in the atmosphere to create a tornado, and the other one is there are tornadoes. So it is a tornado warning. I'm sorry, guys. I wish I could be better at being a meteorologist, but there's a reason why I didn't study that in school. <laughs> Come on, Brooke. You're, you got a background in TV. You should be able I'm, to nail this. Now, oh, now Dan, in, in college, they did, just so that we could get a little bit better at ad-libbing, they put us behind the or in front of the weather screen. You know, it's a green screen for those yes. who... I'm just going to reveal the magic. I'm sure it's very shocking that people uh, know that now. But I remember doing that, and I felt so lost. I was like, yeah, this is not this is not for me this is not what i should be doing whatsoever i have no idea what's going on now real quick just before we head to break we talked about sunny gray and him and his bullpen session today but also i want to touch on one of the reasons why i feel a little bit better about sunny gray possibly just starting on the injured list just briefly is because of what zach thompson has been able to do good during point. this spring training yeah very good point he's pitching so well and and you know, Mo is correct in this, in my opinion, when he says you, you don't win the first month, although the first month was very poor last year. You look, the team looks different when you break camp, then when you get to Memorial Day, potentially, then when you get to the trade deadline, and it's kind of a full season to massage the roster and see what you have. So I, I'm with you. The way that Zach Thompson is pitched, he's forcing his way onto the, the team for sure and maybe into the rotation and, and allows you a little leeway with Sonny Gray to get himself back into the rotation and ease him into competition. Exactly. Yesterday, Thompson tossing four innings without allowing a hit. The only base runner that he allowed came on a walk. And right now, through spring, he has a 2.25 ERA. In 12, inning, he, 12 innings, he's only allowed five hits and four walks while fanning 11. So to me... Put them in your starting rotation. Yeah, why not? And ease Sonny Gray back in. And, you know, it, we talked about this earlier. It is an older rotation, and it's Sonny Gray at 34. You got Michaelis at 35, Gibson 36, Lance Lynn at 37. We talk about leadership on this team. They should have it. Arenado is 33. You got Goldie at 36, and then you added Matt Carpenter. So there should be a lot of leadership on this team, which was something that was missing a year ago. Exactly. Well, that's Dan. I'm Brooke. Coming up next, we have Take It or Leave It. So get your text into the Air Comfort Service text line. That's 314-399-9646. 314-399-YOHO. Take It or Leave It is coming up next. And maybe you should take it or leave it on what? What exactly a tornado warning watch is help us through this because we're learning right now <laughs> we definitely are
take it, you can take it. If you don't, send it right back. Get your text into us, 314-399-9646. And give us your take it or leave it. Brought to you by Gloria Lou Realty. Visit GloriaHasTheBuyers.com and start packing. That's my final offer. Take it or leave it. Brooke, Dan, and Rock here, and it is now time for Take It or Leave It, so get your text in to the Air Comfort Service text line. That is 314-399-9646. 314-399-YOHO. It is time for Take It or Leave It. Dan, Take It or Leave It, even though we tried our best with our second alert weather warning, Randy would have done so much better because he would have risked his life to go up and take the chopper to do a proper weather report. We would have had to have uh, tackled him. <laughs> said, to no, keep him from doing it. Don't do it, Randy. So I'm going to leave that, although he probably would have tried to have done that and banged on his chest to make it sound like a chopper. You mean it's not real, Dan? Uh, it's not. Oh. Um, although the uh, 101 team is looking to invest in one just for Randy to make him happy but uh no i i would say that you want to leave that and keep randall right here to our left when he's normally here he's on vacation but maybe he's somewhere banging on his chest and trying to do a chopper report for his family yeah i don't know if they're dealing with this in arizona can i also uh reveal something a little tv magic for sure. the listening audience so dan as you know in the heyday of local tv there is choppers for everybody that's just what you had. Now, because they're so expensive, it's a lot more rare, And but it's not something that a lot of stations announce. So they have drones that they use. And I know that sometimes you can see where it says that it's a drone that they're using, but that's what they're doing now to replace the chopper. Have you ever used a drone? I have not. They're fun. You really? can hook it up to your phone. You get uh, video off of it. They're amazing. And the shots that you get if you're in television are gorgeous. They're they just, are. They're beautiful shots. Um, okay, the Cardinals lineup is now, uh, now out. Brendan Donovan, Paul Goldschmidt, Brandon Crawford, Nolan Arenado, Wilson Contreras, Matt Carpenter, Dylan Carlson, uh, Michael Ciani and Jose Fermin. Brendan Donovan, this is interesting to me. He is leading off, and he'll play left field. Take it or leave it, Donovan will be the Cardinals' leadoff man in 2024. Ooh, leadoff man in 2024. I'll take it until Victor Scott comes up. I like that. I think that's a good idea. It's interesting, like a lot of teams are looking hard at what the Phillies did in putting Kyle Schwarber at the top spot because you roll over, you feel you're going to get more runners on bottom of the lineup and potentially having that pop at the beginning of the lineup. The one thing I love about Bre uh, Brendan Donovan, he'll give you a long at bat. He's going to get, it kind of reminds me of Matt Carpenter. He's going to find in, in his heyday. He would find a way on and he'd give you a long at bat. Guy on deck would see a lot of pitches coming. The bench would see a lot of pitches coming. And he just reminds me a little bit of Matt Carpenter in his prime. Yeah. Take it or leave it, Rock. Are you going to take it or leave it? I was. You made me think take it or leave it when he gets healthy. Lars Newbar gets a shot at it. Yeah, he could. He will. But I like your idea of Donovan and then Victor Scott when he comes around. We've already seen it during spring training. Yep. I really like the, like the way that he sets the table. There's no way Victor Scott gets lead off time when he gets called up, right? They're not going to, they're not going to, like, if they're well, going to, they're going to soft shoe him, bringing him up, they're not going to immediately just be like, okay. Are you worried we, about we trust service you to time? Hit better than two th no, I just think it's, do you really trust Victor Scott just with his skill set to, to, to hit the majors and hit better than 230? I go back and forth with it. That's I, yeah. That's I, I could see him being a leadoff man. I also could see him in the bottom of the lineup, yeah. which is like a pseudo leadoff man as well. Yes. They, they've done that with Tommy Edmond. They've done it with a couple other guys that Make have speed. Win. Yeah, and put it put him down in the lineup. And for all I know, everyone, you know, people are batting terribly in the leadoff spot all season, so why don't you try it? And I'm wrong. Uh, take it or leave it. Jason Tatum wins the NBA MVP this season. I uh, checked the odds. By the way, he's plus 5,500 right now. I'm going to take that. I think he does. He's been a great representative mm -hmm. of St. Louis, by the way. And uh, I'm going to take that. I think he, who else, Rock? I mean, you got the the normal names, but I think yes. uh, Tatum, with the way that his team has played, would allow him to get the MVP. It's always the age-old question, do you go with the best player or do you go to the best player on the best team? Yeah, he's on the edge of the top five right now, according to uh, FanDuel's current um, odds. Nikola Jokic is minus 270. Shea Gilgis Alexander is plus 370. Doncic plus 850. Giannis Adetokounmpo plus 2000. And then Jason Tatum fifth at plus 5500.
All right. What I'm else we take have? Them. Yeah, I'll take it. That one. Yeah, I, I, I like that one. Take it or leave. It's almost 6 a.m. in Arizona, and Randy's trying to wake the family up to get them to a golf course. Oh, well, it's just uh, him and his son down there, right? So yeah. I think his I think that'd be pretty easy to get him to go out there. I do, too. Take it or leave it. Pete Rose is 83, and he is going to get into baseball's Hall of Fame. I'm going to leave that. I don't think he does, but my personal opinion is that he should. I agree with you, Dan. I think that he should. Will it ever happen? It doesn't seem like it will. I don't I don't think that the, the voters will do it because he bet on the game. Now, do I think that some of the steroid guys could get in, like the, the ones that have come out and said, I have done steroids? I think you can make a separate wing of the hall and put up their numbers and put up their accomplishments because they are part of the story of mm-hmm. Major League Baseball. Fair enough. Take it or leave it. If the Blues win both games this weekend, we'll start to get playoff fever again. I'm going to take that. I got playoff fever right now. They're only six <laughs> points back. Only six points. <laughs> only with 16 play, uh, sixteen games to go. There's six points back of both L.A. and Vegas. Yeah, I, I'll take it. I I want them to make it to the playoffs. That's the thing is I want to, them to make it to the so playoffs. So you're feeling with your heart. I am. I am. That's okay. Maybe being a little bit realistic. It's I think fandom. Jordan. Yes, Jordan Bennington has been the highlight of the season. I like you have more that you have more secondary scoring. But it just, I'm still not convinced that the inconsistency is completely gone. And I, believe me, I can be swayed otherwise. Okay. I, Bennington and Hofer are the two that'll get him in, if they do get in. I do. I, I really like this text. P. Rose gets in after his death. It's a lifetime ban. Isn't that the worst part about this, too? That's, that, I mean, that's, there's, there's like, a, there's a joke there that I, I legitimately I, I think got it's it like, too. No, it's, I'm saying that's a well-crafted joke, but at the same time, God, that is sad. As all get out when you actually think about it. Yeah, I mean, That's if you're going to put somebody in the Hall of Fame, you'd want them to be with us. Just the, the punitive factor that it, it's gotten to now with the Hall of Fame and Pete Rose. Yeah, where it's I, not about the actual facts of the, uh, of what he did. It's just we made a move, you know, 30 years ago, and we can never balk from it. Betting, though, it's, I think it's worse than the steroid era. Really? I do. Betting I think on games? Yeah, betting on games. It's. That's the number one thing. When you walk into a clubhouse, it says you cannot bet on baseball. You can't mm-hmm. bet on games. It's the number one rule. You walk into a clubhouse, it says it plain as day. Yeah. You're not wrong. Take it or, uh, oh, that, that part, I got moved in my bag. <laughs> Take it or leave it. He might not win the regular season MVP, but the Celtics win the finals, and Tatum wins the finals MVP. That one I'll take all day. I would take that more so than him winning yes. the overall MVP. Yeah, I'll take it as well. What else you got, Let's get Rock? One more. With St. Louis major sports infectious spending habits, we will never be a quote unquote dynasty city. I'm going to leave that. Why wouldn't you get, uh, you could have the Cardinals all of a sudden with some of the young kids coming up. You know, you get young pitching. I'm, I'm not saying it's going to happen this year or in the next five years, but it certainly could happen down the road. But also, just how many dynasties have there been in, the, in, in this century? Well, it depends on how you define a dynasty. Three out of four? I'll, three out of five, because I, I think the Spurs count as a dynasty. Sure. Because it was a, a long-standing success, but they didn't have three in a row. I think they had three out of five. Cardinals were close. Cardinals I mean, were close. You, you think about... They went 04. You think about 04, 06. They were in the playoffs in 09, 10, 11, yeah, 12, 13. Two wins, and two wins five years apart, probably not enough. Yeah. But I think even you know, Yankees, Patriots... The Heat, the Spurs, the Lakers. I mean, most of those are in very parody heavy or parody lacking sports in the first place. I just don't think there's like, like you say, we're not a dynasty city. So you think about Boston, L.A., Montreal, like all these dynasties happened before the 1990s for the most part. Mm -hmm. Atlanta, I guess, because they are are the ones in the 90s. But like that's like five dynasties in the last 30 years. That doesn't happen in sports. Welcome to free agency, bud. I have one more from the 636. Take it or leave it. Standing on your porch watching a tornado versus taking shelter is how you show your Missouri resident ID. <laughs> I'm going to take that. I'm going to take that. Uh, I Don't you find yourself when the weather gets bad that you're peeking out the door? Of and course. Watching it rain hard and look at this weather. and It's crazy. I, I do, and it's probably not the right thing to do. No, it, it really isn't. I was telling a story, Dan, when you were going out to get some coffee. Uh, When I was younger in high school, we had a really bad tornado that came through our neighborhood. And I remember being in high school, you think you're invincible, right? You're like, oh, this isn't a big deal. I was home alone because both of my parents were working. And I just remember eating Cheetos in the kitchen. And all of a sudden, I hear something that sounded like a train. Coming through. Yeah, a train. And I was like, 
I don't know much about tornadoes. Obviously, as the text line has pointed out, I don't know much about tornadoes, but I do know that if you hear a train, you need to go take cover. So I did, and it really tore up our neighborhood. I bet this time next week we're going to see the grass popping green. Get this big <laughs> this rain. Is, this it's is gonna, so weird. This is, weather is so weird. It is, and it's going to get warm, and then all of a sudden, you know, the spring is here. Spring has sprung, but that's what you get when you're here in St. Louis, Missouri. You get all the seasons, all the weather changes. You feel every single point of it. Now it's beautiful outside. Well, uh, I don't know. It's lightened don't up Don't listen a bit. to me. If there's one thing you've learned today, don't listen to me for your weather reporting. Well, that's Dan Einbrook coming up next. We are going to talk about how baseball can grow their game with their younger fans. That's coming up next here on The Opening Drive.
perspective on the day's top stories. It's the opening drive's fresh take. It's almost like the average age of a baseball viewer like goes up one year every year. So that's usually a, a not a good sign. And uh, there is so many like the, the people, there are young fans, young kids and uh, younger people that like baseball, but that just, they just aren't, they're not in those places that baseball's traditionally been and uh, figuring out how to, how to like meet them where they're at, where they are is like one of the hardest things to do because uh, frankly, the business model isn't as easy. It's not as easy to project making a bunch of money that way. And uh, that is, it's not something the uh, that Major League Baseball likes to do is invest money in things that they aren't going to get them a return, uh, at least in some guaranteed way. It's Trevor May on foul territory talking about how to get the younger audience involved in the game of baseball. Love to hear from some parents out there that are curious how they get uh, their kids involved in the game of baseball. A lot of them play it, but are they interested in what we're seeing night in and night out on the major league scene? It's a valid point. It goes back to, are you showcasing your stars like the NBA does, like the NFL does, um, your interest in the game of baseball? But I do think by shortening the games, it, it helps because your attention span is kept closer. We live in a baseball city, so... It seems like there's more interest here, but nationwide, the national pastime has come uh, become the National Football League. And it's the thing that everybody's trying to figure out. And baseball is not alone in trying to make sure they engage the younger audience more because it's no secret that the attention span has gotten shorter and shorter and shorter. But the NFL does such a good job, as you mentioned, Dan, of marketing their stars where you have fantasy football. You have people. I've paid attention to players I never thought I would pay attention before because of fantasy. There's different ways that you're engaged or maybe that I even see on social media. The player does a good job of even self-promoting themselves themselves and I get more interested in that player now I think another thing and you mentioned this with the shortening of the game I didn't think I would like the pitch clock at first but I actually enjoy it I noticed a difference while it was a smaller difference I noticed the difference in the games do you think it would matter you you touched upon this that social media becomes imperative for players so give them incentive to promote themselves, promote the team, promote the game of baseball, and pay them. Like, if you become one of the highest players in terms of engagement, like golf does this, yeah. and still every year it's Tiger Woods, even though he's playing, like, two times a year. But do you incentivize some way for the players to get more involved, interact with fans, and so many young people are on social media? On TikTok, which I know that who knows what's going to happen with TikTok right. here soon. But Now you had to get political. I No, I'm sorry. I didn't mean <laughs> to. But who knows what's going to happen with TikTok. But it seems like TikTok is a good way to utilize it. I've seen the NHL actually do a pretty good job of showcasing their personalities a little bit more on TikTok. But I think that you have to use social media in that way. Do commercials even matter? No. You don't think like seeing Otani or Trout? I, I'm with you. I don't. I don't see a young fan saying, "Well, I saw Shohei Otani, you know, pushing Nike spikes, and now I'm going to watch the game." I, I just don't see that. Maybe I don't know. And it, it seems like how people take in commercials are completely different. I think another way to improve the game outside of marketing your stars is. I just kind of want the game to go back to Whitey Ball. And I'm talking about playing the small ball. We know that Whitey Ball was a lot about stealing bases. That's why, even though not a fan of the Reds, but that's why the Reds were exciting outside of their starting pitching last season yeah. is because they were so aggressive. I like to see, you know, hit and run. I like to see all that aggressiveness. And I think that even that is something that helps the game even more so when you're looking at the product on the field. I understand launch angles and home runs. That's also exciting because when you look back at all the attention it got during the McGuire era. But I think also small ball is exciting because then you have to pay attention to every single moment of the game. The ball is in play. That's yeah. something to think about. So this uh, from the 314, I got my eight-year-old into watching baseball two or three years ago. We watch Quick Pitch on MLB Network every morning. The show highlights every game from the night before, and the highlights are about two minutes long if you think about a baseball game that lasts 230 to 245 there's about six minutes of action and i think that's a problem too there's just not a lot of action are you going to sit mm -hmm. down and watch 
two and a half, two forty-five. I get a lot of people that tell me that uh, you know they're they're doing other things, but the game is in the background, radio, TV. Yeah. So they're paying attention, but it's not like they're sitting down through the whole game. And I, I just can't see. Um, more kids doing that market more video games maybe that's something you could do that's from the 314 i think that makes some sense too yeah from the 636 you need rivalries you need fights you need benches clearing you need bras you need personalities and personalities to show it's like a wwe promotion i agree with that and the balance schedule i do like that you are seeing more teams than you had seen had not seen prior but then i also like some of the rivalries that you have built up along the way where you know that you're going to see that team multiple and multiple times throughout the season you want to see some benches clear yeah you want to see the old time uh, argument with an umpire yeah i think that'd be kind of fun yeah i, I miss it replay like is... lance lynn and angel yes. hernandez the other day replay has taken that out for the most yes. part you just don't see the old school argument i loved it i wanted them to get the call right first and foremost but i wanted to see uh, the old school argument 618 says we are diehard hockey fans watch any game that's on tv all winter to spring so the action speed is like hitting a brick wall going into baseball it's fair. There's just not a lot of action inside a baseball game for two hours and 45 minutes. And that's why you need Giovanni Gallegos leaping out of the bullpen during games. <laughs> that is still one of my favorite videos on earth. My favorite was the brawl in Cincinnati when yes. Brandon Phillips tapped the leg of Yachty and the bench is clear. And I mean, it was a good old fashioned brawl. And my favorite side of that is this massive humanity and crawling out from underneath is Jeff <laughs> Supon. Yes. It's the best shot ever. I love it. It was yeah. hilarious. Yachty, of course, future Hall of Famer, but also his personality is something that people would tune into because you like a guy one, neck tattoos are intimidating, and he lived up to that intimidation. He did. So that's <laughs> something to think about as we move forward uh, in terms of the baseball season, how to try to get young kids involved in the game. Coming up, Blues Hall of Famer, Bernie Federko, and you are listening to the opening drive on 101 ESPN. Hi, it's Randy Carricker, and I have been in a situation where my car got rear-ended and I had to get a new vehicle, and I didn't have a great down payment, and I didn't have a great trade-in. And I sure could have used, used Auto Loan Pro. AutoLoanPro.com is the place to go if you are in an emergency situation in getting a new vehicle. Go to AutoLoanPro.com and download their playbook, and they will work for you. They're working with over 50 lenders to get you the best payment possible on a loan for your new vehicle. And when you go to AutoLoanPro.com, maybe you're looking for a car and don't know exactly what you want. Well, just use their drop-down menu, and you, and you can look for maybe a new Honda or Acura. Maybe you can look for uh, another vehicle used under $10,000. They've got them at AutoLoanPro.com, and you can get financing if you can make a payment. It's AutoLoanPro.com. They're great people to deal with. It's a fantastic St. Louis company. Anyone can sell you a car. It takes a pro to do it right at AutoLoanPro.com.
101 ESPN has your chance to win free tickets to see Justin Moore and Randy Hauser. Go headlining on Saturday night, October 12th at Hollywood Casino Amphitheater. Find all the ticket details and find that chance to win free tickets for Justin Moore and Randy Hauser right now either at 101ESPN.com or on your 101 mobile app. Find your perfect new floor at our four convenient locations and online at BoardWalkHardwood.com. Welcome back to the opening drive. Brooke, Dan, and Ronk here, and we head to the celebrity line to talk to Blues Hall of Famer Bernie Federko and, of course, Blues analyst for Valley Sports Midwest. Bernie, it has been three weeks, I believe, since the last time we talked to you. How have you been? Brooke, I've been absolutely fantastic. A little bit of vacation for a change, so a little bit of sunshine down south, and uh, it, it was a nice little, little break here. <laughs> I, I was going to say, you deserve it, Bernie, because you're always working <laughs> super hard. If you don't mind sharing, where did you go, and what was the uh, highlight of your trip? Uh, you know, we were on a cruise in the Caribbean, so it was uh, it, it was really nice. Uh, we were done for a couple of weeks and went kind of down through – um, you know, the islands all the way down to Barbados. So it was, it was nice. It was warm and, uh, it was very relaxing, put it that way. But I was still watching blues hockey. So it, I was still involved. <laughs> Be honest, Bernie, you weren't watching blues hockey. You were taking in the sun. Danny Mac. I, you know what? I watched a little bit. I, I can honestly say I watched a little bit and I did take in a lot of sun. It was very, very sunny. <laughs> I love it. What did you think of the game last night? Bennington again with 40 saves, and boy, he's given them a chance to stay mathematically alive. He's been absolutely awesome. Yeah, Danny, it's, it, the goaltending on this team, you know, we've talked about it all season long, and, and when you look at really the Blues winning four of the last seven games, I mean, the first star has been Bennington three times, and Hofer was the first star in Boston, so uh, you know, I, they're just on top of their games, and, and I've been talking about Bennington since since he won the Stanley Cup for the Blues, I mean, he, he yeah, he, he's had some issues where maybe his anger management needed to to change a, a few times. But he's competitive and he's always in the right position. And uh, I can't say enough of the way that we played last night. He was absolutely sensational. Yeah, and the goaltending has been a huge highlight. But I'm sure you noticed, Bernie, something else that has really stood out to me here recently is the secondary scoring that you're getting from the Blues right now. What do you think has led to this? Where we're seeing them step up in this way. It's just, I think, uh, one of those things, uh, Brooke, that's kind of like cyclical. Sometimes, uh, you know, guys are, are, are not scoring, and all of a sudden it just kind of it just happens. And I think that third line, especially now, you know, with Hayes and, and with Kapanen and Saad, I mean, those guys are all capable of scoring goals. But, I mean, what, uh, Kapanen went, what, 20-some games, and so did Hayes. And, I mean, Saad gets his 20th goal last night. So it, I think it's just kind of one of those things where it's a matter of time. And, they, you know, you get the better matchup when you're on a third line. You're not going up against really the top line. So if you can just outwork the, the other third line, you're going to score some goals. And uh, that's kind of what happened in Boston the other night. What they scored four of the goals. They get another one last night. So uh, those are just things that do happen. I mean, they're very capable of, uh, of it. I mean, they're, they're professionals. They, they've, they've all had had passed where they would score goals, especially saw it. I mean, he scores 20 goals no matter what happens every year. So uh, it's good to see that happening. And it certainly takes a lot of pressure off the, the top line. Who's really, the blues have really been counting on a lot uh, to score their goals. Bernie, what do you think it means for these young players to get a taste of what it's like for playoff hockey guys like Jake neighbors, Torpchenko, a uh, bold Duke is one I'm thinking of Matt Kessel, Perunovic, all these guys, what do you think it means for them going down the stretch? Yeah, this is just a really a fodder for, for their futures. I mean, uh, this is playoff hockey right now. I mean, it starts always about with the last 20 games of the year, and especially the Blues where they are. They're in a battle right now. I mean, it's going to be very, very tough. I mean, when you look at uh, what's ahead of them, um, you know, both L.A. and, and uh, Vegas are, what, uh, they're 12 games over 500, so the Blues right at five right now. So really only they're six behind in, in, in the standings. But when you look at it, they're – a lot further back because of the fact that they're, you know, seven games out when you look at uh, wins and losses. So uh, it's going to be tough, but I think this is when, when the guys understand and they learn that they've got to have to give a little extra 
uh, they have to kind of almost watch what the other teams are, are doing. But uh, I think this is when you learn that, that uh, the chips are in place now and you've got to make sure that you battle a little harder and you, you try to find ways to win. And, and the last couple of games have been perfect. That I mean, to go into Boston and win that game, uh, that was a learning process. I mean, last night, I mean, it was great. That they were able to be the team that, that's really in the battle with them. But it's, it's going to continue. I mean, you get Minnesota coming on Saturday. So each game is going to be have to take in. No one can take anything lightly. And you certainly, uh, for the young kids, it, it's a really good learning process. Bernie, I was really excited to see this yesterday. The Blues signing Matthew Kessel, their defenseman, to a two-year one-way contract. I know that we've seen a small sample size of him, but still in that small sample size, I'm really liking what I see from him. Yeah, he's going to be one of those steady defensemen. I mean, he's not flashy out there. And I think when you see a young defenseman, when when you when you really he, he you don't notice much about him. And I think that really says a lot about him is that uh, he's very very steady. I mean, he's uh, uh, you know worked well, very well with with Krug uh, when he's got the opportunity, and uh, he played very well when he got called up the first time. Uh, went back down when everybody got healthy again, and now that he's back now after the trade deadline, I think it's going to be great for him. He signs a new contract yesterday as well. So, uh, yes, I, I think that he's got a really good future. Is he going to be a, a third or a fourth or, or higher than that? That, that time will tell, but uh, he certainly defends well, and, and, and that's where he's the best at it. That's why they got him in the lineup right now. So the trade deadline came and went, Bernie. The Blues stood pat. Were you surprised at all or just how they approached the trade deadline? No, Danny. I mean, I think that Doug said right off the bat that uh, he he's a roster has a roster right now that 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 is in transition. He he doesn't want to, uh, you know, make this a, a long term rebuild. So I mean, it's a retooling as he keeps calling it. So no, I wasn't surprised. I think that I was very happy that uh, uh, there was so much talk about Bucinavich maybe being moved, but uh, I was really pleased to see that he wasn't moved at all. But, uh, I mean, there, there's certainly a, a lot of talent on this team, and, and I think we're getting a, a, the opportunity to see guys like Bull Duke right now. Uh, Dean is up. We'll probably get him to see uh, in the lineup at, at some point in time. So uh, this is still a, a process of moving forward. So you, you, you don't want to – to sell some of, of your assets that, that, I mean, yes, if you have to, you do it sometimes, but uh, I think if you sell a lot of your assets right now, all of a sudden you really throw the pressure on the young kids right off the bat and it makes it more difficult for them. So uh, I think they like the status quo. And I think this, as you just mentioned with the, uh, the pressure on the young kids. I think they're going to learn from this, and I think this is going to be a real good learning process. And who knows what can happen? I mean, the Blues have ten games against teams that are below them in the standings right now. Um, you win all those ten, all of a sudden you're really, really in the hunt with just uh, you know the other six that, that that you've got against teams that are in the playoffs right now. So I think it's going to be really interesting. It's going to be tough, but uh, I think this is a, a really good. As I said, we it's a, it's a real good learning process for for all the young kids and for everybody in the organization. Bernie, with this four-game homestand, as we're talking about, of course, the Blues making this playoff push, what do you want to see in the rest of this four-game homestand that will said, well, that will tell you they can make the playoffs because of this? Well, these are, are going to be very competitive games. I mean, obviously, the, the Minnesota Wild, I mean, they play tonight, so are they going to be two two points ahead of the Blues or are they going to be tied? I mean, if they win tonight, they're all of a sudden they're two ahead. The Blues have a game in hand, and that's the big game uh, on Saturday that they're going to go head-to-head. But, I mean... That's a, a game that where you – it's a divisional game, it's a, it's a must win. I think every right now, Blues are, every game is a must win. But uh, you've got that game, and, of course, you've got a, a, the Anaheim Ducks coming in uh, on Sunday. That's a game you have to win. They're below you in the standings. They've got to – you've got to win that game. And then, of course, you've got Colorado coming in, which is uh, uh, always going to be a tough battle. They're one of the top teams in the league right now, and it's a divisional game. So I think you just have to take the games one at a time. I think the Blues are in the situation right now. They can't worry about, yes, they get 16 left. I think they have to be in a situation where they – I have to take each game as it is and, and, and play. Just not worry about what the next one until you get the one that's in, in store for you finished right off the bat. Bernie, your former teammate and goaltender is number one in wins. That's Mike Liud, 151. Jake Allen, 148. I was looking this up last night. Third on that list is Jordan Bennington at 140. Does that shock you that he's already moved up that quickly to potentially be the all-time wins leader in goal for the St. Louis Blues? 
No, it doesn't surprise me, Danny, because the way he plays. I mean, I, I, I said it. Uh, I mean, he reminds me a lot of, of the way Ludi played. I mean, he's got that competitive edge all the time. I mean, he hates to lose, hits to give up a goal. So that does not surprise me. But I think when you, uh, you know, look at the history of the Blues, I think it's maybe surprising. I mean, you got Curtis Joseph. I mean, uh, there's been names that, that have been here before uh, that you thought would have more wins. But uh, certainly, Ludi was very successful, and now all of a sudden. Uh, you got the Jordan Bennington in, in a situation where, yeah, I mean, it doesn't surprise me he was going to be the all-time leader. Uh, it was just whether he's going to be here long enough, and certainly with the long-term contract, he's going to decide it. And, and I was kind of very uh, happy that, uh, you know, it's, it's one of those things. I mean, there was a really good article written the other day about uh, Jordan Bennington, about how good he's been, and he's not really got credit for it. And, you know, is, is he on a, on a team that maybe if he was on another team, he might be winning more, more Stanley Cups and I'm, I'm, I, I understand that very well, but I'm certainly glad that uh, George is, is still here and uh, hopefully he's going to be uh, continuing to put up a bunch of wins and, and, and I think he'll be the all-time leader for, for wins uh, after maybe even, well, I don't know if, it's, if he can get there this year, but certainly once once he passes it, I think he's going to put a lot more numbers ahead of him. I love sitting next to Hall of Famer Bernie Federko and picking your brain or listen to you uh, break down a game. So I'm going to ask you, there's one player right now with the Blues, young player that you love to watch play. Who would that be? Well, I love the way Jake Neighbors has played. I mean, he's been absolutely outstanding. I mean, Robert Thomas as well. I mean, Robert uh, uh, does a lot of really good things. I mean, he sees the ice very well. Um, and, and he's becoming more and more poised as a 200-foot game. So, I mean, those are the two guys that I really, really enjoy watching. It's going to be interesting to see what, what Boulder continues, continues to do. Uh, so the Blues do. They have got some, some good young talent, and, and it's going to be really a lot of fun to watch it as they continue to mature. Well, Bernie, thank you so much for joining us, and I'm glad that you were able to take some time off for the vacation. I know you already typically already have a good tan going, but I'm sure now <laughs> the tan's looking really good, so I'm looking forward to seeing that on the broadcast. <laughs> it, it's it's pretty good. I, I, I have to say so. That, that I was not away from the sun for, for, for many hours of the day, so <laughs> <laughs> it's nice. nice to be back, though. Nice back to be back in with you guys back in the action. Now. So you guys have a great day. All right. Thank you so much. That was Bernie Federko. The Blues facing the Wild coming up this Saturday uh, puck drop, excuse me, is going to be at seven o'clock. Coming up next, we have the fight, and we have a returning fighter. Isn't that correct, Rock? Yep, Stephen. Stephen, Stephen, I'm going to see Stephen again. I'm a little nervous this time, Dan. Don't be nervous. Just uh, <laughs> get the puck deep, four check, give 110 percent, get in front of the net, not front. Yeah. Uh, you know, get the front net uh, presence, and if you do all that, the I think you're going to be. Yeah, you're going to be just fine. Okay, I'll be the Jake neighbors of this fight. So coming up next, we have the fight with Stephen.
This is Rocky with your Sports Center update brought to you by Saliga Heating and Cooling. The Blues last night with a big win over the Kings, 3 to 1 as they try to claw their way back into playoff contention. They have a back-to-back here over the weekend. Game 1 on Saturday is going to be a 7 p.m. puck drop, 6 p.m. pregame right here on 101 ESPN against the Wild, while Sunday 6 p.m. puck drop, 5 p.m. pregame right here on 101 for that Ducks game versus the Blues. And last night the Billikens bumped out of the A10 tournament by Duquesne 83 to 73 and Travis Ford let go from the university after the game. That is your Sporting Sports Center update brought to you by Saliga Heating and Cooling, an independent American Standard Heating and Air Conditioning dealer. fans should know they're going to visit with uh, Tim Parker coming up in about 10 minutes or so. We also have JR coming up a little later in the show to talk about Blues hockey, but time for the fight and we say for the second day in a row, good morning to Steven. How you doing, Steven? I'm fine, Danny Mac. How are you? I'm good. Are you staying dry out there? Uh, so far. All right. Be safe. Here we go. Question one. Marvin Harrison Jr. is almost a guarantee to be a top five pick out of Ohio State this season. But which East Coast school did his Hall of Fame father attend? Was it Syracuse, B.C., or Maryland? Let's go with Maryland. Final answer. Question two, Rock. Who is the current active career leader in sacks in the NFL? Is that TJ Watt, Von Miller, or Calais Campbell? TJ Watt, final answer. Question three. Who is the winningest coach in Billikens men's basketball history? Was it Charlie Spoonauer, Rich Grauer, or Eddie Hickey? with Charlie Spoonauer. Final answer. And the Kings are the only eighth seed to ever win the Stanley Cup. Who did they beat in that 2012 final to win that aforementioned cup? Was that the Panthers, the Penguins, or the Devils? The Panthers. Final answer. All right, Steven, you didn't feel great about yesterday and you hit the jack. How do you feel about today? Not great. Not great. Another another old, good old Moselock. Not great for Steven on how he did today. But again, the the reverse psychology worked for you yesterday. So we now have Brooke in the building. Brooke taking on Steven for the second time. Brooke, say hi to Steven. Hi, Steven. Hi, Brooke. Hi. By the way, love your name. My dad's name is technically Steven, but goes by Steve. And your dog's, dog's name is Stevie. Stevie. And my dog's name is Stevie. Yeah, so there's go. there's a lot happening here, as you could tell. All right. We're gonna take that. Try to take down Steven for round number two. All right. I'm ready. I guess. I had my biscuits this morning. <laughs> Oh, question one. Here we go. Marvin Harrison Harrison Jr. is almost a guarantee to be a top five pick out of Ohio State this season. But which East Coast school did his Hall of Fame father attend? Now, do I? I I can't remember. No, you don't have to. Unless I ask. I'm trying to do two. Okay. Well, here's the thing. She gets the Randy Plus. Gotcha. So where did he go to? His father. His college. Okay. Marvin Harrison, yeah, senior. Yes, Marvin Harrison, senior. Um, well, first of all, he was fantastic with the Colts and Peyton Manning back in the day. And if you watch Marvin Harrison, Jr., uh, it's mentioned about 50 million times. It's kind of like we do this a lot as broadcasters, Dan, where we mention where, who the father is, where they went about a bajillion times. We kind of do that with Tyler O'Neill. Remember that? It's Absolutely. like every Mr. single Canada? game that, uh, yeah, his dad's Mr. Canada. He went to Syracuse. Final answer. Final answer. Who is the active current career leader in sacks in the NFL? Current? Yes, the current active career leader in sacks in the Uh, NFL. I have two in mind, but I need the options. Is it TJ Watt, Von Miller, or Calais Campbell? Hmm. I'm going to say it's between Watt and Miller. Now, Miller was absolutely disappointing last season. A lot of money. But... He got a lot of money because of what he's been able to do. 
So I'm going to go with Miller. I think your table talking just got me, son of a... Who is the winningest coach in Billikens? Look, I know that he's made a lot of money. (laughs) Are you ready for question three? Yes. Okay, here we go. Who is the winningest coach in Billikens men's basketball history? It is... Isn't it Hickey? You going with Eddie Hickey? Yes, Eddie Hickey. Final answer? Final answer. Question four, Rock. Okay, well, talking's working for her today. I don't like it. The Kings are the only eighth seed to ever win Hickey? the Stanley Cup. Yeah, no first name there. We got it. The Kings are the only eighth seed to ever win the Stanley Cup. Who did they beat in the 2012 final to win that aforementioned Stanley Cup? I'm going to need the options for this one. Was it the Panthers, the Penguins, or the Devils? Hmm. I cannot. This is going to have to be a guesstimate on this one. I feel like penguins. Sorry, I'm trying to do table talking with you guys right now. It's 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 bad. I'm just taking that as your final answer. Um. Yeah, I'll go with penguins. Final right. answer. Penguins. Final answer. All right, Stephen. Trying to move on to round three. And what I'm sure Randy will definitely love as a Hall of Fame uh, contestant, <laughs> should he go to tomorrow with a win or Brooke trying to stave off a very, very perturbed Randy character come Monday by not allowing no, any Hall of Famers that. this week? Was Brooke able to stop the run or does Steven move on? Ring that bell. The winner and still champion of the fight, Randy Carricker. The fight is presented by Golf Discount of St. Louis with the most experienced club fitters in town. Why shop anywhere else? Just win, baby. Steven, unfortunately, your prediction for your questions this time was much more accurate. Unfortunately, your answers were not. Brooke Grimsley beat you three to nothing today. Well, I gave it a try. I didn't have a clue today. I like, you know what? And I respected the speed and alacrity at which you answered the questions. I thank you for that. Let's go through the questions and answers. Marvin Harrison Jr. almost a guarantee to be a top five pick out of Ohio State. But dad, Marvin Harrison Sr., not as big of a deal. Didn't have the dad above him. He went to Syracuse, correct there, I'm from Brooke Grimsley. The active or the current active career leader in sacks in the NFL is, in fact, Von Miller. T.J. Watt has not yet broken 100 sacks. Von Miller over the 120 sack mark despite a disappointing season last year. Last year, the winningest coach in Billikens men's basketball history, not just Hickey, but our man Eddie Hickey, over 200 wins. Travis Ford, by the way, leaving St. Louis as the third all-time in wins for the Billikens. And the Kings are the only eighth seed to ever win the Stanley Cup. That almost was broken this past year when the Panthers almost became the second to do it conceivably with the new wild card. It's essentially the eighth seed. Who did they beat in that 2012 final to win the Cup? The Kings beat the Devils in that final to win the Cup. So a 3 nothing win for Brooke Grimsley today in the fight. Steven, thank you so much for joining us on the show and in the fight these last two days. Thank you, guys. And if I can, I want to give a shout-out to my daughter's college softball team. They're coming home from Louisiana after a tough doubleheader loss yesterday. But uh, like I said, coming home, regroup and go again. Where did she play at? She plays at Crowley's Ridge College out of Paragould, Arkansas. Awesome. Oh, nice. Well, congratulations to her. And thank you so much for joining us for the fight, Stephen. Thank you. Well, we move that on. A, that was that was a battle. So nicely done again, Brooke. I I guess so. Somebody is upset with me on the text line, per usual, Dan. But who cares? Yeah. What are they What are they upset about? They're trying to insinuate that I must be cheating. Oh, it's a cesspool, well, Brooke. You shouldn't listen to what no, they say. No, no, don't call them a cesspool no, no, again. They, don't, they, you, don't you Don't you dare other do than, that. Other than a few good people, it's a cesspool over there. Don't listen to what they say. Nah, they're listeners, man, and we appreciate them. That's what that does uh, yeah, all about. We appreciate the texters. I didn't say I didn't appreciate yeah. them. I just said they were. I just well, said, if you call you them know, a cesspool. It's not a positive thing. I wouldn't think. Oh. Well, I mean, they just don't know me then, I guess. Okay. <laughs> Let's move on because Tim Parker's coming up from City SC.
Welcome back to the opening drive. Brooke here alongside Dan and Rock. And we go to the celebrity line now to talk to City SC center back Tim Parker. Tim, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. How are you guys? We're doing great. So, Tim, you guys are coming off a very hard, hard fought two to two draw against Austin FC the other day. Thanks to two second half goals. What happened through the course of that game where you guys were able to come from behind to earn the draw? Because that's something that it seems like towards the end of last season that you guys struggled with. But so far, we've seen that early on from you guys. Yeah, we've shown uh, good perseverance and good fight to be able to come back in uh, in two games so far this year. Um, unfortunately, in Austin, we felt like we had a good run of the game, um, but we just gave up that early goal, which led us to be behind most of the game. Um, and then, yeah, you know, obviously fighting back and getting that last goal in uh, the dying seconds was awesome. I got to ask you this. You scored the first goal in, in city history. What did you do with the soccer ball? What what happened? to the, Did you keep it? Did you give it to ownership? Is it like in a museum? What, what do we got with that first ball? Yeah, uh, Carolyn has that ball somewhere. Um, <laughs> The location, the location is very, very confidential. Oh, oh confidential. Oh. I'm assuming you, though, know where it went. No, not even I know. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, I think one of the things that I remember most from last season is, of course, your historic first city as Seagull, and you had the moment where you revealed that you and your wife were having a child and you put the soccer ball underneath your shirt to look like a baby bump. How is fatherhood treating you now? Yeah, it's it's been good. Um, it's been really fun the last couple months, um, just because he's starting to show a lot of like human tendencies, where he's smiling and giggling and um, getting up to that like six six month range. Where uh, so he's just over six months now, so he's starting to really uh, liven up a, a lot. So it's been a lot of fun. It can be tough on a pro athlete having a newborn because of sleep and making sure that you stay ready to go for practices and games. So I'm assuming your wife is big in this and trying to help out a pro athlete get through. What are the tough times of uh, having a, a newborn? Yeah, yeah, she's been incredible. Um, she's definitely been holding down the fort. And, yeah, it's, it's hard to really prepare for life uh, – off the field and on the field with a baby. So there, as much warning as you get from other guys, um, you never think it's going to be as uh, as drastic as it is. But it is quite the change. But we've uh, we've dealt with it pretty smoothly. We're talking to City SC center back Tim Parker about City SC currently. And, of course, you guys had some new faces, some new acquisitions coming in at, during the offseason, one of those being Thomas Totland. How has he really changed the game from the right back position? Yeah, Tosh has done really well. You know, um, he's integrated with the group uh, pretty smoothly, um, which is a hard thing to do when you're coming into a group that, um, like like we have, you know, we're a pretty tight-knit group, so he's, he's done that pretty well. And then on the field, um, he's aggressive. You know, he has that kind of go-go um, attitude, which we kind of need, especially in our outside back position, where um, as quickly as you're defending, we want him to kind of get up and get involved in the attack as well, and that's something that he prides himself on. So, um, we're glad that he's been able to get up the field, too. How has it been, uh, the pairing with you and Nielsen, and that pairing worked out for you so far? Yeah, it's been good. It's been good. You know, um, Joachim obviously struggled a little bit last year uh, coming back from his injury, so I'm happy that he's healthy and he's ready to go this year and uh, just looking to continue to build that relationship. Um, it's, been, it's been good to play with him the last couple games, so I'm hoping that it continues on. Tim, just for you guys this season, of course, last year was a historic season, inaugural season, and now this is obviously the second edition of this. What is the feeling going into it this year, just kind of getting all of that out of the way of the inaugural season? Yeah, you know, it's it's a little bit less of, I guess now we have some expectations from the outside. Um, we, we set the bar pretty high, I would probably say that, but, you know, it's, it's good. You know, we have a lot of the same guys in this locker room, so the, the picture doesn't really change too much from the inside. Um, we kind of know what to expect out of each other. The chemistry is there, the camaraderie is there, and it's just kind of continuing to build that uh, professional mindset of how we can go throughout the entire year um, and what success looks like for us. We were uh, talking about Jordan Bennington and the job that he's done for the St. Louis Blues between the pipes. And you've got, in, in your realm of what you do, you've got a hell of a goaltender in Berkey. W what's it like playing with him day, day in and day out, practice to practice, and just seeing what he's done so far? Yeah, Berkey's great. You know, um, there's there's no denying that. Uh He's, he's a leader for us, uh, first and foremost. And then, obviously, everyone gets to see what he's what he's capable of when, uh, unfortunately, when the defense doesn't do their job as well as we should. 
Um, but yeah, you know, obviously the best days for us are when Berkey doesn't have to make a lot of saves, but um, fortunately he's able to uh, make those saves when we need him. And then his distribution on the ball is, is probably the best in the league. So um, we rely on him for much more than just uh, the saves he's able to make. It's his distribution and his leadership. Um, and his experience overall. So we're learning more and more about the players of City and trying to expose the positive things about this team, the individuals. You are from, and correct me if I'm wrong, you're from Hicksville, New York. What has been your impression of uh, being in St. Louis for you and your family and how it's worked out? Yeah, um, it's, it's been great. You know, I mean, I, we really, really love the, uh, the whole sports time aspect, the whole sports town aspect of St. Louis. Um, I love that it's a, it's a smaller city where the food aspect has been great, the sports has been great, and the support has been awesome. So um, it's been something that I haven't really experienced in my career before going to a sports town. I've lived in a little bit of bigger cities where there's a lot much there's a lot more going on. Um, so the sports don't get as much uh, credit or attention, and it's cool to kind of see it the other from the other side now. From a player's perspective, do you find yourself trying to find when Messi is playing and, and watching when he plays? I do, as a fan of soccer. If he's on my television, I'm not going anywhere. Do do players do the same thing with that too? Um, probably some some guys. I would probably say do. Uh, I'm on the opposite end of that spectrum. Oh, really? Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm kind of over the Miami hype train at this point. Uh, <laughs> I'm, hoping, I'm, hoping they hit, I'm hoping that they uh, get a rude awakening at some point. Well, Tim, we appreciate uh, everything you've done here with St. Louis uh, City and what you've done for the town and scoring the goals. It's like first ever goal for you on just about every level, it seems like, since you've uh, put on the kit of, of St. Louis City. So thank you for what you've done and, and thanks for coming on the show today. Yeah, no, thank you guys for having me. I appreciate it. You got it. That is uh, Tim Parker from STL City. Um, a lot of people say we don't talk enough soccer, but when you get a guy like that, you want to to know more about the players. And I think we're starting to learn a little bit more as we go along. We really are. And Tim Parker is such a great personality, as you just talked about, Dan. But also the way that he just goes out there is something that I feel like a lot of fans always appreciate. He's aggressive. You heard him, what he said with that messy comment. I, I love that kind of stuff. I like that he's not afraid to talk a little smack i was surprised that he said oh, that. he does that he does that and i like that i uh, i find myself watching if if messi is on my television and i see all the social media highlights because it's like every time he plays and touches the ball mm -hmm. but um i love the fact that i can watch this guy play he's amazing yeah and it's great for the league well you know it's funny because there were so many people talking about when he would come over like oh he's washed all the different kind of stuff he doesn't look washed whenever you watch him it actually shows you that there is a stark difference between the mls and their play overseas but i still think that mls bringing a star over like messi we're continuing to see a great and it's a great thing and it's growing here in st louis it i mean is. watching city fans are involved in it they want to get a ticket they want to go down to the stadium the stadium is state-of-the-art so I, i'd say that this has worked out pretty well and it's been a perfect marriage for st louis i think it's the hottest ticket in town dan I, yeah it is right now it's it's not easy to get that ticket although they did have some tickets that were available i guess it was the second game of the season and uh, as you go along though in the year and I, the, the best part about this is that you could have a hockey game, you could have a city game, and you could have a baseball game all going down market. Mm -hmm. And that's what you want for downtown St. Louis. You want a buzz. You want people going down there. You want people to ex experience what it's like to be a sports fan in this town. And it's absolutely beautiful when you drive past it, too. It looks so nice. And it is just, we're just really lucky to have Carolyn Kendall and the ownership group, of course, Kavanaugh being a part of that as well. Everything that they've done. Dan, I know that you were a big part of as well of making sure that it got here to St. Louis. And it's made a huge difference. And I have people ask me all the time, like, how do I get a ticket? And I tell them, well, if you find out, then figure it out for me too, because I can just get a media pass and go in there. But I actually want to be down closer to the pitch one day. That's a goal of mine. So our thanks to STL City a center back, and that is Tim Parker. Coming up, Rush Hour Reset. You're listening to 101 ESPN.
Hey, it's Danny Mack on this Thursday for Stewart's American Mortgage. If you're someone who is looking to purchase a home or refinance, if you're looking to consolidate some of that ugly credit card debt, maybe you don't know exactly what direction to go in in any of these things, let me make it easy for you. Call Stewie from Stewart's American Mortgage. He will help you every step of the way. If it's a new home you're looking to purchase, he will get you to the closing table fast. How fast? 10 days and he will get you the best interest rate possible and he also has the bagel loan you hear that all over the station the bagel loan that can help you out too so what is the bagel loan if you borrow two hundred thousand dollars or more there's no underwriting fees no appraisal fees no title fees no lender fees and no closing costs Stuart is your guy he makes it so easy for you and his folks that he helps out all the time no lender fees, no closing costs. Stuart is the guy who makes it easy for you. Any questions on rates, the industry, the trends, give Stuart a call. Call him directly on his personal cell phone, 314-324-4440. Again, that number. Text him, call him, 314-324-4440, or you can Google the bagel loan. NMLS number 226715. of the day on the opening drive with a rush hour reset. Welcome back to the opening drive. Brooke, Dan, and Rock here. And happy 314 day, everyone. I feel like I missed that earlier, Dan. I feel like I should mention that now in the rush hour reset. And the Battle Hawks are doing an event down at uh, Ballpark Village. You will be a big part of that. You will be moderating and emceeing. And I know you are ready to go with 314 day down at Ballpark Village. That's right, Dan. If you don't have any plans today, you can come out to Ballpark Village because it is 314 day, as Dan mentioned. And we are going to celebrate all things STL and all things. Things, Battle Hawks for a free event. It's a town hall, and you're going to have head coach Anthony Beck there and some of the other Battle Hawks brass. The event is free to attend and will feature fan favorite activities, ticket giveaways, exclusive merchandise, live music, and more. Plus, you will see our friends over there. You will see CD, we'll also see Anthony, and we'll also see Jamie Rivers because the Fast Lane will be broadcasting live from 2 to 6 p.m. courtesy of Sumner One. Get all the details now at 101 ESPN. And I would love to see you guys out there to talk all things Battle Battle Hawks and Kaka for all of my Battle Hawks fans out there today. So let's get into some college basketball news last night. Of course, Mizzou, they are done, Danny. Um, it's kind of a mercy killing at this point. <laughs> I'm sorry that might be a little, little harsh, but we kind of knew that it was going to come to an end. Mizzou basketball falling to Georgia in the SEC tournament last night, 64 to 59. No wins in SEC play. I didn't see it happening, to be quite honest with you. Why are you clapping? <laughs> Why? It's, it's, it's almost as hard to go undefeated as it is to lose every game. So you Danny. wanted it's, him it's, to go it's, uh, it's, no, winless? It's, it's simply a feat. It's simply a feat. And I, I recognize greatness instead of being all biased. Okay. And negative. Well, I'm not being biased. Me, I would, would like to see him win a game. I mean, a game. It was impressive. Nicely done. I, I, I've never seen it before. And <laughs> I game. live for things I've never seen before. And that's, that's why I'm a sports fan. Way to go. Way to go. Mr. There's Nicely been other done. teams that have gone uh, undefeated. There's other teams that have lost every game. So they lose every game. That's surprising to me. I thought they'd pull out... Maybe one, maybe two. Didn't happen. At least one. So that's the mulligan, right? That's the mulligan for the program. And then you come back next year with a good recruiting class, and it's supposed to be top five in the country, and it's going to take a little time for them to get ingratiated to Division One basketball. But still, uh, winless in the SEC, it's tough to swallow if you're a Missouri fan. Here's why analytics can be fun. Because if you're thinking, hey, I'm a Missouri fan, nothing can make me feel worse. Except for, like, apparently the analytics say that Mizzou should have actually, like, found a way to trip over their own two feet and into at least three wins this year based on the numbers. Ooh. And yet, everything went against them consistently every time. Yesterday, they're missing, they're missing, you know, 
point blank layups at, at, in crucial moments against Georgia just to completely flub and let the let the game quite literally slip through their fingers. It was Stenzo's. not great. Not great. No. Well, you know what I love more than expected goals? Expected wins. Yeah. Because I just always like to expect things. Dan. Yeah. That, don't you? That's a great oh, analytic oh, stat. No, no, no. It is tough to be a fan of basketball in the don't state of Missouri this. because you had. Go ahead, Rock. What do you got? Just don't don't do this whole expected goals thing. It's 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 not. It, don't act like it's nothing. All right. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not saying expected <laughs> wins are better. You open I'm the saying door. it makes it worse because everything tells you that you should have at least been able to, like, you weren't that bad. You should have been able to li quite literally trip over your own two feet and get a win at some point, and they couldn't even do that. I'm not saying make it better. I'm trying to make it even worse. Mm -hmm. So it looks like a tough uh, day if you're a basketball fan in the surrounding area because now Illinois has been good this year. Yes. But you got Mizzou going winless, and then you got uh, the changing of the guard with uh, the head coach at SLU. Billikens falling to Duquesne last night. The final score in that one, 83-73. to 73. And as you mentioned, Dan, it also marks the end of an era for Billikens basketball with the announcement that the Bills are moving forward from head coach Travis Ford. Now, just to break down how this all went. So you had the game end, and then Martin Kilcoyne was the first report of Fox 2 that Travis Ford was fired as the Billikens head coach. But during the press conference, it was wasn't confirmed yet, but you could tell by the way that Travis was talking about things that it was done and over with for Ford. Here's oh, what Travis Ford had to say. Oh, but I will say I've, um, I've loved my time in St. Louis. Absolutely loved it. Uh, my kids would call it home. Um, it's maybe where I call home. Um, and um, the fans have been tremendous. I love the fan base. Absolutely. Just uh, love the fan base. And Obviously, the critics are always the loudest. I've been doing this a long time. When you play at Kentucky and you've been through the career I've had for 27 years, you kind of get that and understand it a little bit. And I said, oh, you know, you hear the critics, but I can't tell you how many fans have emailed me and how many supporters of ours uh, of the program have texted me over the last couple of days. And that means the world to me. That means more to me than anything else, because sometimes it's all about the negativity. Uh, it seems like yesterday I was at Campbellsville University, 27 years ago, as a young head coach. Um, boy, does time fly. And uh, I've enjoyed my career. I've enjoyed it. Uh, but 27 years is a long time. And uh, now, you know, I'm good with that. I'm good with those 27 years and uh, with the relationships I've built and the games we've won and the programs I've taken over. Um, I'm good. I'm good from that standpoint. Eight seasons with the Billikens, and it comes to an end for Travis Ford. But, Dan, it kind of sounded like during that press conference that he not only mentioned his time with the Billikens, but he was saying goodbye to 27 years in college basketball. That sounds to me like he might even be changing his mind on his next step, that maybe college basketball isn't for him anymore. It reminded me, uh, with listening to that, and who knows if he's going to coach again and his appetite to do it, but... It reminded me of football coaches that are jumping right now from being head coaches to being a coordinator. I'm not saying he's going to be an assistant coach. I, I think that's probably the last thing he wants to do because you have to get on the recruiting trail. But NIL and transfer portal and just, you know what, I'm done with it. I don't need mm -hmm. to deal with this. I've made a ton of money. I just don't need the headache of this. He has raised a family in St. Louis, um, and he's a good person. I, you know, for us in the media that get to know these guys, and I, I got to know them fairly well, I text with them all the time, and uh, I hate it when good people, these kind of things happen. I understand that. You yeah. know, it, it's part of the business, and he had a tough year, but I don't like seeing that whatsoever because good people get fired, and that's just kind of the, the state of sports. It, it does happen. I just don't like seeing it. It really is, and when you're talking about the media aspect of things, he has been one of the kindest coaches when I came here to St. Louis. He was always open, available, willing to really give you from the TV perspective. You're always looking for great sound bites, and Travis Ford was willing to do that, but then also he would talk to you personally, one-on-one. -on -one. It felt like he knew everything every single media member that took the time to go over to the Billikens practice. Always available. Mm -hmm. Always available. Now you, you turn the page and you say, okay, who's going to be the next head coach? I came up with three guys that I was just thinking off the top of my head. You got Chris Mack, who is fired at Louisville, but also at Xavier, went to eight tournaments in nine years. Big name. That could be somebody that comes in. Darren DeVries out of the uh, Missouri Valley Conference at Drake, at least 20 
uh, win seasons all six years at Drake. He's a very good coach. And then the guy that's interesting to me is Josh Schertz from Indiana State. 62-39, three years at Indiana State, which at times has been kind of the outpost of the Valley. He took D2 Lincoln Memorial, one of the worst in D2, into a powerhouse. He's an X's and O's uh, savant. So those are just some of the names that I bet we hear coming up with SLU. And what is your checklist when it comes to bringing in a new head coach? NIL transfer portal and give me the jimmies and joes <laughs> <laughs> if i can get those three things then i i think i'm going to get players to come and we were talking about it earlier but it has changed so much in college sports where that is the priority is how well you can manage nil i mean think about how quickly eli drinkwitz has become more of a bigger name in college football and that's because he has found ways to navigate and really use nil and the transfer portal to his advantage now advancing what we're doing here on the rush hour reset we just had tim parker on i asked him are you you watching messy <laughs> Are you paying attention like so many soccer fans are? And here's what he had to say. Probably some some guys I would probably say do. Uh, I'm on the opposite end of that spectrum. Oh, really? Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm kind of over the Miami hype train at this point. Uh, <laughs> I'm, hoping, I'm, hoping they hit, I'm hoping that they uh, get a rude awakening at some point. I think that's why fans really like Tim Parker. He's just so honest with what he had to say. I, I loved it, too. I love it because here's the thing. With Tim Parker, that is who he is. He likes to talk smack. And so he, I know I can't remember what it was specifically last season, but we asked him about a specific team. He is willing to go out there and talk a little smack about whoever it is, whoever the opponent is. I like that. And you can see that he backs it up with his play as well. Now, we are the home of the Blues. The Blues win last night. They've got back-to-back -back games this weekend, Saturday and Sunday. And as this season has been uh, all year long, giving them a chance to just hang around. They're within six points of both L.A. and Vegas with one more game played than both teams. But Bennington, Hofer, these guys are giving them a chance to win night in and night out. Jordan Bennington is just going to drag them into the playoffs at this point. If they get into the playoffs, and we've been talking about this all year because of what Bennington has been able to do, He's going to be the reason that if they make the playoffs, that's he's going to be the sole reason why that. I know that you're going to have your scoring. Robert Thomas has been fantastic this season as well. I agree with Bernie what he was saying earlier, but Jordan Bennington is the reason that they've been able to stay in games and win games. So Bennington with 40 saves last night, going back to January 1st, so going into 2024, a 2.35 goals against average and a 928 save percentage. It was win number 140 in his Blues career last night. Five on five with Joel Hofer and Bennington. They are ninth in the league. And when you look at those high scoring chances, Rock, I know you love those. They are ninth in the league. So they are playing very, very well. Or what what's the stretch of that again? So I'm I'm taking uh, taking a look at the high scoring damage chances in the NHL. Oh, I was or, or what the stretch is. Oh, like oh, the stretch since, of uh, this is all year. Really? They're not really? Yeah. Wow. Okay. They've been pretty good, man. Listen, they, they haven't been getting a lot of them. So if you if you if you're not going to get a lot of them, and you're only going to generate the, the best ones. That's you know that that's that's kind of why that stats exists because the you know, the offense has really not been the issue for this team for a lot of a lot of the season. It's the fact that they have to score three or four times to win because the defense is letting teams walk all over. Them. I was just giving you some analytics. I no, know I how much it. you love. I love the analytics. <laughs> you know how much I just, <laughs> no, just when because when you said it, I just wanted to know if there was if that was like since January first. Oh, okay. Since like the, in the last ten games, I didn't know if there was a window on. The stat outside of the full season and I was just, I was honestly pleasantly surprised that it's that high across the full season yeah Tor Patinko scores from 59 feet away 13 goals now in the season that's more than he had in his first two seasons combined so some players to watch some fun uh, down the stretch here and see if they can make it interesting and we're going to talk to the athletics Jeremy Rutherford coming up next and we're going to see if he thinks that the Blues maybe still have a chance to make the playoffs that's coming up next here on the opening drive
Try up that wood basement with Woods. The all things basement tea experts at woodsbasementsystems.com. Hey everyone, it's Brooke here and I want to tell you why I love the Missouri Athletic Club so much. I'd set two really big goals for myself this year. One, to get into better shape. Not that I was out of shape, but I just want to get into better shape and really prioritize my health and also to get back into the sport I played my entire life and that is tennis. And I've been able to accomplish both of those goals thanks to the Missouri Athletic Club. I work out with Christine two days a week and she has just been amazing. She's also given me so much great life advice, fitness advice and nutrition advice as well. And then also I am playing tennis with Scott and it's been amazing just to get back out there on the court. He's made it so much fun. And that's why I love my MAC because it's just always a wonderful experience and it feels like I'm joining a community. Attention St. Louis sports enthusiasts. On March 25th, the Blues and Cardinals join forces for a night of SDL sports fandom. It's Cardinals night at the Blues game. Immerse yourself in the ultimate celebration of our city's passion for sports when the Blues take on the Vegas Golden Knights. Theme night buyers will take home a limited edition co-branded One Nation Tervis Tumblr designed by local St. Louis artist Emily Stahl. Get your tickets now at stlouisblues.com slash theme. From the Car Shield Studio, this is the opening drive. News, notes, and nuggets. It's time for the Rutherford Report with our Blues Insider, Jeremy Rutherford. Brought to you by Scott Lee Heating Company, a proud Mitsubishi Electric Elite Contractor. Okay, the intro said news, notes, and nuggets. Will we actually get those? How about this? JR, Jeremy Rutherford from The Athletic is in studio. We're going to talk a lot of Blues hockey as the Blues are making it interesting down the stretch. Brooke Grimsley, Dan McLaughlin, Matt Rocchio, and Jeremy Rutherford in studio. Great to have you in. Great to be here, and this is uh, pretty surreal sitting in Randy's seat. I feel like I want to say thank you for listening and thank you for playing. <laughs> My pleasure. <laughs> My pleasure. My pleasure. How, how about the game last night? What did you take away? How about that game? I, I think that's a game where 
uh, you go into it and you think this is a big one. This is one that the Blues need to win. This is one that the Blues need to play well. And guys, how many times have we said that this year and it did not happen? And it did happen last year. So give the Blues a lot of credit. Back-to-back -back wins. Now just six points out. It's still a long shot, I think, to make the playoffs. But as Jordan Bennington said last night, and I'm sure we'll talk a little bit about him in the next couple of minutes, he said, uh, hey, we're putting ourselves in a pretty good spot to write a new story. I mean, what do you mean? What are, what are we going to talk about with Jordan Bennington <laughs> other than that he's been dragging them around this season? Basically, it feels like he's just put the team on his back. And if they do go into the playoffs, it's going to be because of Jordan Bennington because he's going to drag them into it. What have you just seen from him, not only just this season, but here recently? It's just... I think uh, you guys just had Bernie Federko on, and he's been saying it for uh, years, that uh, Jordan Bennington is a competitor. He'll do anything it takes to win. And even when the team isn't going well the past couple of years, uh, you know, you'd talk to Jordan Bennington and his locker stall, and we can still do this. We just need to put together you know, a streak. We need to win tonight. We need to do this. And that's all he talks about when you talk to Jordan Bennington. And, Dan, I know, you know, you used to watch Cujo back in the day wearing those Loved him. uniforms that we saw last night. <laughs> terrible. And you're terrible. <laughs> well, you were ready for that one. And, uh, you know, I'm just way up 300 feet up in the press box last night looking down, seeing some of these acrobatic saves in those unis, and it looked like uh, Cujo. So he was everything last night. He and Hofer have been really good. Uh, obviously, Bennington is 1A. He's your guy. He's the guy that's going to get you there. And uh, he is doing everything he can right now. They're starting to get production, too, from the third line, aren't they? Dan, I think that's a huge thing. Like, Jordan Bennington can do what he's doing, and he can win you some games and get you into the playoffs potentially. But they're not getting in, and they're not going anywhere if they don't have more secondary scoring. And that third line in particular, look, at that's a group of veterans, Saad, Kapanen, Hayes. And I know it's been kind of slow going for a couple of those guys all season long, but they've been terrific the past two games. They were great in Boston, really good last night, getting in the zone, creating some zone time. That's what we're not seeing from this Blues team right now. They're getting the job done, and they're scoring. So uh, what, uh, uh, Hayes has three points in the last two games, and Saad hit 20 goals last night. Real good secondary scoring, real good production from that line. Speaking of secondary scoring and also guys who hate to lose, I feel like Jake Neighbors fits into that category. We've talked about him a lot this season, but JR, he's becoming one of my favorite players because he he is not afraid to really show that compete level every single game. He's not afraid of the greasy goals. It seems like it's a fight. You notice him on the ice. That's the biggest thing. Yeah, Brooke, uh, you know, for years you cover this team. And what I've come to find out with Blues fans, Dan, some of them, you don't even have to be a 50-goal scorer for them. You just work hard, right? That's right. Like, just work hard. Just work hard. And so what I've heard in the past couple months is uh, fans come up to me and say, I'm getting a 63 sweater. I'm getting a 63. Like, Jake Neighbors is my favorite. And that's because he's working hard. I mean, look at that goal last night. Once again, what's he got? 21 goals right now, and there's probably 18 of them in front of the net. And he works hard. And he's just got, he's one of those old soul uh, kind of retro players, kind of takes you back. And so I think that he's a perfect fit for St. Louis. And it's, it's so exciting to see the production because you can talk about a guy working hard all you want. But if he doesn't produce, you know, it's going to be tough to, to uh, play that role. And uh, he's doing a great job. So if you have a question for JR, he's going to be with us for a couple of segments. You're a Blues fan. You want to know something that's going on with the Blues behind the scenes. he got the scoops, man. 314-399-9646. And we're not going any further with that. Yo, no. <laughs> um, Nine -nine. Yo, Yo I, JR no. wanted to do it, Dan. Don't know he, he pressured didn't. me into it. No, he doesn't want to Yes, do he that, did. <laughs> um, I saw, we all did, the extension with Matthew Kessel. What would you think? Great. Phenomenal. You know, I looked up his games played yesterday, and I knew, obviously, rookie, but 25 games. I mean, for the team to say, we've seen enough in you to give you a one-way contract for the next two years, granted, 800000 so it's not a, a lot of change, but a one-way deal for a guy who's 23 years old, and he's done it in 25 games. You know, he, he's just so steady. Like, I watched him last night, Dan. It was in the first period. Puck comes in the zone, a uh, little bit of a rush, and he just uses his body to, to push the guy out, and he comes up with the puck, and they're back the other way. And that's a guy who's played 25 games in the NHL. So I see a, a good future. Now, when I say that, good future as a steady guy. Like, he doesn't 
strike me as a guy who's going to be flashy in the future, but that's what the Blues need. They need a top four right shot defenseman, a guy you can count on. They got a good one in Matthew Kessel. Now, I don't want to put the cart before the horse too much because we are still, of course, enjoying this season as it plays out. But, of course, a lot of people want to look ahead to things, including that Pavel Buchnevich possible contract extension. It seems like Doug Armstrong was pretty open to it. What do you think that contract could look like, extension could look like? Yeah, I, I think that, uh, you know, we're going to get to that point. Uh, I spoke to his agent a couple occasions leading up to the trade deadline. He, by the way, didn't think that Pavel Buchnevich would get traded. we got to keep in mind that he has a 12-team no-trade list, so the Blues would have had to go to him. Does he like it here? I think he does. I think he does. Uh, but here's the situation. As great of a fit as he is for the St. Louis Blues, and, and if you want to move this team forward, if you're Doug Armstrong, he's a guy that you want in this group. But, you know, we had to set the table, the stories that I wrote at The Athletic about him potentially being traded because it was – an option that existed. Like, if you don't think you're going to be able to sign him, then potentially you trade him at this deadline. They, of course, didn't. I think a lot of Blues fans are happy. Now the key is, can you get him re-signed? But, Dan, here's the deal. You know, he's going to be 30 when this new contract kicks in. Obviously, he's a player that's going to want eight years because if you're a player like him and you sign for, let's say, four or five years, now it takes you to 35. Now you're 35 and you're trying to get that next contract. That's hard. Why not get it now when your stock's high? Get that eight years. But it's going to come, what, eight years, $8 million a year. If the Blues are in a retool and that contract takes a guy till he's 38, it's something that you really have to question before you do it. Were you surprised at all the Blues stood pat at the trade deadline? You know, I think it's a kind of multifaceted question. Um, Doug Armstrong surprised me a little bit when he said we were looking to potentially add, but that game against Nashville that they lost, and then at it, home. it started the skid, yep. right, at home, kind of changed their tune in terms of adding. I don't think it would have been a major upgrade either way. You know, they weren't going to move assets to bring in, you know, a really good player. But I think that uh, he would have done something, you know, that sort of surprised me. Now, the fact that they stood pat, you know, it doesn't surprise me that Buchnevich stayed. It doesn't surprise me that, you know, there was Preco rumors. You know, it doesn't surprise me those guys are here. I thought that they might be able to move one of the UFAs, but Doug was honest. Like, we talk about his honesty. He said, I didn't get any offers on these guys. So even if you do get an offer, it was going to be a fourth or fifth round pick. That didn't make a lot of sense. Since then, they've won a couple games. They're kind of still in this playoff race. So I think what they did made sense. And we mentioned earlier that you can get your text in if you have any questions for JR. JR, this one comes from the 636. Do you think there's any chance of an off-season contract buyout? And if so, who would it be? Maybe just the buyout perspective, because that's not something that we see Army do. Yeah, he's never done one. And I think uh, I actually looked up that stat a few years ago and discovered that, you know, he didn't, he hasn't had a buyout. And not only that, but he is the only GM in the NHL as we speak here, who has not had a buyout. I he's mean, that's the only one. The really? only one, which is remarkable. So it shows the good spending that he's done. It also shows the faith that uh, Tom Stillman and the uh, investors, the ownership group, have had in the spending. You know, they've done, I mean, let's give these guys credit. They've spent to the cap every single year. And, and so I think when you look at the question about could there be a buyout, I think the first way that Doug is going to approach it is always going to be, how can I make a trade if I want to move a contract? He's done that. Remember with Yori Laterra, bad contract, move him to Philly, got Braden Chen back in the deal. And how did he do that? He did it by including two first round picks. I think that's what the Blues are probably going to have to do to move one of these contracts is include that sweetener uh, to see if it could entice other teams to take it. If that doesn't happen, if you can't, let's say, move a Tory Krug, a Justin Falk, one of these guys, by including draft picks in a trade, you could get to the point where it's a buyout. However, these guys still have three years left in their contract, so you're getting that cap hit for each of the next three years um, and potentially more if you're buying these guys out. Final question of this segment. Jeremy Rutherford is with us, kind enough to come in studio and battle the weather because the weather was <laughs> a little nasty out there, and then we'll get to a bunch of texts. But Drew Bannister, what do you think his future is with the club? Yeah, I think it all depends on which direction Doug's going to go with the roster. And, you know, he, he says it's a retool. They want to stay competitive. Dan, he said that the other day after the Detroit deadline. We want to be competitive in the NHL. So I think it's a situation of, you know, do they think Drew Bannister is the guy? Guy who can steer them through this if if they take a step back and take this to the studs um, you know do they stick with drew do they go a different direction i think it's all going to be predicated on what type of roster they have 
going forward and what uh, they think Drew Bannister can do for that roster. Jeremy Rutherford is with us from The Athletic. It is in St. Louis, 928. Another segment coming up and a bunch of texts. We appreciate that. You're listening to 101 ESPN. There's the best way to play daily fantasy. No more lineup stuff. It's all about the Pick'em product with our friends at Underdog Fantasy. It's Pick'em Champions. You select two to five players from at least two different teams, select higher or lower on the player stat projections, and once your entry is ready, you can pick your entry fee. You're going to be entered into a game alongside other underdogs, but don't worry about that. As long as you hit your entries, you're taking home your money. Let's even build an entry for today, and it's a Thursday, which means you can even add PGA entries right now. So let's look at the Players' Championship. I'm going to go with Matt Fitzpatrick. He's been obviously one of the hottest golfers on the tour the last couple years. I'm going to go Matthew Fitzpatrick, lower than 71 strokes today in the first round of the Players' Championship. I'm going to combine that with some NBA entries. Jason Tatum, St. Louis' own higher than 44.5 points, assists, and rebounds. And Randy Carragher is going to be at that Celtics and Sun game. So let's stay in Phoenix. We're going to go with Devin Booker, 24.5 points. We're going to go higher there as well. So you have three already with your entry, and you can even boost up to four. And how do you do that? You're just going to go to Underdog Fantasy, where it's super easy to play and even easier to get started. You're going to go to their easy-to-use mobile app or 
over to underdogfantasy.com. You're going to sign up with the promo code ROCC, and then Underdog is going to match your first deposit up to $100, and they're going to add a mystery special pick to your first pick of entry. So you're going to take your first entry from 3X to 4X just like that. That's Underdog Fantasy promo code ROCC to get your first deposit of $10 or more up to $100 matched plus your special pick. Must be 18 plus in President's Day where Underdog Fantasy operates. Terms apply. Can serve with your play called 100 Gambler. Visit www.ncbgambling.org. This is Rocky with your Sports Center update, driven by Johnny Londoff Chevrolet and Johnny Londoff Autoplex. The Blues last night with a big 3 1 win over the LA Kings. The Kings are now tied with VGK, six points ahead of the Blues. They do both have a game in hand on the St. Louis Blues. The Blues will have a chance to claw back with a doubleheader this weekend. Game one on Saturday evening. It's the Wild and the Blues, 7 p.m. puck drop, 6 p.m. pregame right here on your home for the St. Louis Blues, 101 ESPN. Sunday changes a little bit. They're facing off against the Ducks. It'll be a 6 p.m. puck drop, which means you got to show up here for 101 ESPN pregame starting at 5 p.m. on Sunday. That is your Sports Center update driven by Johnny Londoff. Find your roads and shop 24-7 at Londoff.com and LondoffAutoplex.com. Are you kidding me? JR is with us. Jeremy Rutherford from The Athletic. Brooke Grimsley, Dan McLaughlin with you. It is 935 in St. Louis. And JR, there's a bunch of texts coming in. I have one more question I want to ask, and then we'll get to the text. But Torbjinko, do you think when things were going south for this team that they thought about moving him up? Because he's I, he's like a torpedo coming yeah, off the bench, man. <laughs> he's fun to watch. I, he's like my favorite player to watch. Yeah, how about that? You know, his dad uh, came over to North America and played in the American. Am I crazy to no. Oh, no, it's okay. great. Yeah, no. His dad came over and played in the American Hockey League, and uh, Terry Yake actually played with him really? in Springfield. So I called Terry Yake last year, and I go, hey, you know this kid on the Blues, uh, Torpchenko? And he said, yeah. I go, you played with his dad in Springfield. He goes, I did? Oh, Torpo, Torpo. <laughs> so I think the nicknames, you know, sure. go down generation, so that's pretty funny. But uh, he's been great. Uh, I love watching him play. Just so physical and strong on the forward check. And, and this year, what's he up to? 12 goals. How about that uh, deflection? Empty netter from center ice. Yeah. Uh, so last night gets another one. 13 goals. 13 goals. That was the one last night. So uh, I just think he's been a great surprise the past couple of years. Like in the minors when he was coming up, people were saying he was okay but didn't couldn't finish and you know lacked some of the skills that he needed to play at this level. But uh, I think we've seen otherwise. Also one of my favorite post-game interviews of all time where he talked yeah. about the beer league. <laughs> yeah. I just, I, and I think that, of course, you know, the way that he was phrasing that is that he just wanted to see more compete out of his group. But it was one of the best interviews that I think I've ever been a part of. Brooke, I'll never forget that. So you know how it is. You get in the locker room. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you get there before the players show up. I got there after Torpchenko already started talking. So I walk over to his locker stall. You put your microphone in his face. <laughs> He's already like in mid-sentence. And all of a sudden I start hearing, this isn't beer league hockey. This is like, come on, we need to. I'm like, what is this guy saying? <laughs> yeah. All of a sudden you see the PR guy behind you. Uh, he's kind of lighting up like, oh, what's going on uh -oh. here? What's he saying? But uh, that was, yeah, probably all-time interview He has there. a great personality and I think everybody appreciates his physicality. Well, another young player I think a lot of fans are hoping to see, maybe soon or maybe next season, is Jimmy Snuggerud. Do you think that we'll see him with the Blues at some point this season? Yeah, so there's a chance. And the way it works out is this. Uh, he's at the University of Minnesota. They're in the regionals. They've qualified. They'll play at the end of the month. And if they win, they advance, obviously. Uh, the Frozen Four is in early April. So if they were to advance to the Frozen Four, and I don't think they're a favorite, that would take them into early April. And by that time, if the Blues are out after the regular season, you're only talking about a matter of a few games. Here's the situation with his contract. He would, if he decides to turn pro this year, and I think that he will, but he could go back to Minnesota if he wanted to. If he decides to turn pro, he's going to sign a three-year entry-level contract. And if he just plays one game mm -hmm. for the St. Louis Blues in April, that eats up one year of that three-year contract. So 
how does that affect the blues? You, you wonder, wonder why, you know, one year, what's that going to do? Well, that means that when he starts next season, he'll have the two years instead of three years on his contract, which means you'll have to pay him sooner that bigger contract. Why would the blues even do that then? So, so they probably wouldn't, and I don't know that they would, but Doug Armstrong has said, hey, you know, we're ready for Jimmy when he's ready. So the other way around that, there is a little bit of a loophole. He could go to the American Hockey League and do a pro tryout, and so he wouldn't sign that contract. Let's say he plays eight or ten games with Springfield down the stretch, and then he signs his pro contract and joins the Blues next year. 314 asking, what type of player do the Blues need looking at free agency in the offseason? Well, it's it's a fair question, and we can get to it. The only thing is this. like, What are you in right now? Because you're, people are saying you need to go out and, and sign some people and be more competitive. But guess what? Like, with where the blues are at right now in the retool are you really going to go out and sign a guy six years seven million dollars to come in and help you with your forward group i mean you need help right uh, i think doug armstrong's probably going to focus on the defense i think there's probably going to be some turnover there dan um so could they be active in free agency i suppose but you know doug's not one to go get in those bidding wars and especially when you're in the state that they're in right now. So, you know, I, I think maybe trades are probably the route that he would go over free agency. That kind of plays into this question by the 512, and they're talking specifically, though, about the top line. But it says, would you separate Thomas and Cairo? What should be the top line? Now, I'm going to kind of fix that question a little bit or change it up a little bit because uh, as we know there was a lot of rumors surrounding jordan Cairo. we talked to you about it, about him possibly being traded do you think that that's still a possibility before his no trade clause kicks in well i think it's always a possibility and that no trade doesn't kick in for another year so uh they have the ability to trade him if there's a taker out there and if the blues want to trade him i don't want to assume that they that they do um so you know, right now he's still a member of this team, and and you'll have to see how that plays out with him. But as far as the top line, you know, typically it's Buchnevich, Thomas, Kairu. You know, they've had some success. It hasn't always clicked. You know, five on five, this team has struggled tremendously. So uh, Drew Bannister had to mix things up, and he did in Boston. Put Buchnevich in the middle, and how about that line? I mean, this line of Buchnevich and neighbors and Bull Duke mm -hmm. and Bull Duke, if he can get some more shots off, that's a pretty hefty shot. So I don't know. I don't get too caught up, especially down the stretch here and what the line combinations are. You just want to see some progress from some of these guys. And, you know, whatever happens this year happens. They get into the playoffs, they win around, they lose around. You know, next year you're going to come back and I think you're going to be able to look at those lines and put a lot of thought into them. Uh, and, you know, if you have a snugger route, now you get another element. So it's really going to be fun to do that next year. You had a, a nice one on one, one with Dean and that was in the athletic uh, tell our fans that are listening the blues fans who this kid is and, and what he could do for the club yeah first of all he's got a uh, five-month-old Doberman uh, named Prince people when I wrote about that they said hey we, we need a follow-up story on Prince you know, so, <laughs> and they wanted to know did he bring Prince to st. Louis with him I don't think he did and it makes me wonder what do young players in the American Hockey League do when they get sent up? You can't bring your dog with you. I guess you run it up to the kennel real quick. Or... Well, they got to call your brother and get yeah. an Airbnb and yeah, figure yeah, out exactly. how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> but So, good kid. You know, he came to uh, the Blues in the Ivan Barbashev trade. Uh, he was uh, 30th pick in the 21 draft. And so they, they bring him in, and uh, I think they're going to get a look at him soon. It wasn't last night. They wanted him to get a practice or two in before he plays. I don't know that he'll for sure play Saturday against Minnesota, but we could see him in the second game of the back-to-back -back against Anaheim. But Dan, 200-foot player, uh, maybe like a Tyler Bozak, like he's got some skill, but at the same time, he's more of a hard worker. So I uh, could see him very soon. What are you expecting to see from the Blues and the rest of this stretch? What would you think is a realistic expectation for the group? Yeah, so it's it's tough, as we all know, because of the inconsistency. Like, they can put a couple games together like we've seen, and then all of a sudden, you know, we're talking after Saturday's game against Minnesota. Well, there we saw it again. You know, they, they fell off. But it does seem like there's some mojo in that locker room. It, it really does the past uh, couple games. And, you know, as I said earlier, when you got a Jordan Bennington trying to will you, I think that's a, a great thing. And then now you're getting some of that secondary scoring like we touched on. So it's just going to be a matter like Drew Bannister has been saying for a couple weeks now. You know, guys got to be willing and want to do this. They got to see what's in front of them and take charge. And 
for most of the year we haven't seen that but now it's crunch time so you think that could happen how has the situation been with Cairo after so much was made when Craig Berube was let go and he was kind of the center of it it was a firestorm around him what happened Dan I was uh, well, I, I know then for a couple weeks yeah now, so. your your interview did uh, did a lot no <laughs> uh, you know I it's just is he a, regrouped? Is he okay mentally? Where we you know all those things? Yeah, I, I think he's fine. I, I think that, yeah. To be honest, I don't know that much has changed. We, we thought maybe that, you know, that could be a, a little bit of a turning point in terms of maybe his understanding and awareness. And and I think for the most part, look, he's a he's a good young player who's trying to figure it out, and that's not abnormal in the National Hockey League. But the thing with Jordan Cairo is he's had a ton of success. Like, he's scored the 37 goals last year, so you know what he's capable of. It, it's just all about figuring out that consistency and I think understanding how important you can be to the team when you apply yourself and be that type of player that I think people know he can be, just need to see it. Yeah, and of course, with the contract comes a lot of that pressure and being in the spotlight all the time, too. And I think somebody who's dealt with that really well is Robert Thomas. I mean, it seems like he just continues to progress every single season. Yeah, he's been great. And, uh, you know, you guys can debate this. Jordan Bennington, Robert Thomas, you know, team MVP. You know, I think probably Bennington gets the nod with the way he's uh, played here lately and, and, and especially, you know, the, this whole year. But I think that lately just kind of puts him over the top, right? But great year for Robert Thomas. He, he has just taken it to another level. And it's so fun to sit down and, and talk to people who see the little nuances of what he's doing. I did a story with Paul Stastny a few weeks ago where he I sent him, I emailed him some video of Robert Thomas. And I said, can you take a peek at this and show me what he's doing, right? And just to listen to Paul Stastny, who's you know played a 1,000 games in the league, and he's sitting there telling you, well, he's doing this, he's doing that. Um, I think he's got the respect of all the, the big players in the league. Um, I'm still working on a story about Robert Thomas that we wanted to put off until after the trade deadline. Deadline, so hopefully we can tell fans a little bit more about Robert Thomas. But if you could draw up a year for Robert Thomas, this would be it. Do you know the uh, latest on Joel Quenville and where that stands right now and him trying to get back in the league? Uh, as far as I know, and this isn't any insider stuff, um, he wants to come back. He's seeking to come back. He still needs approval from Gary Bettman. Uh, Dan, I think that you know Joel Quenville has done, I think, at least one interview in recent weeks. And you well, you know as well as I do, you know, with baseball that, you know, when people want to get back, I think you start to get your name out there a Absolutely. little bit more and you do the interview. So I think we're going to see him come back uh, to the league. I don't know where he'd pop up, though. What are you working on at The Athletic? What do you got? What do we have? We got a, a few things. Uh, well, they got back-to-back -back games over the weekend, and these are big games. And then, uh, as I touched on, we have that Robert Thomas story. And then uh, a few other things that are kind of off in the distance, so no need touching on them now, but uh, always, always busy. Really appreciate you coming in. Thanks, Dan. Great insight. That's uh, Jeremy Rutherford from The Athletic with Brooke Grimsley. I'm Dan McLaughlin. Rock and Roll is coming up next on 101 ESPN.
Queen of Hand Roll. Let's rock. Let's rock today. Selection Sunday is almost here. Get signed up to play in this year's Bracket Madness Pick'em Challenge. Register to participate now at 101ESPN.com. It's free to enter, and this year's top score will take home a $250 Amazon gift card and a 101 prize pack. See the contest rules and get signed up to play in Bracket Madness now at 101ESPN.com. Brought to you by Bud Light and Twin Peaks. Now, we have some breaking news that is coming out right now from Katie Wu of The Athletic. Tommy Edmond has been shut down from hitting activities for a minimum of one week. He will not be cleared before opening day and will start the season on the injured list. Uh, also, Ali Marmol on Victor Scott the second quote: "Victor has had a really good camp. He has shown well on the field, and he's putting together some really good at bats. Obviously, he's exciting on the bases, and he's played really good defense. He's asking the right questions. He's handled himself well off the field as far as the clubhouse and engaging. It's been exciting to watch him. We're going to continue to watch him. Oh, I think it's 50-50, but the last part we're going to continue to watch him <laughs> kind of stood out to me like... Yeah, we um, love him, but not great. You know, maybe we're just going to wait a little bit, wait and see here for the final couple of months. But that does tie into our final couple of weeks. It does tie into uh, what Katie Wu was reporting about Tommy Edmond. If he's going to be out a significant amount of time, which could be the case, that uh, clears away for Victor Scott potentially. Well, I would like to watch him with the major league club dan that's where i would like to watch him i don't watch him in the minors i want to watch him here i think that's uh, the thought of everybody <laughs> everybody wants to watch him so it's going to be interesting to see what they do yeah and that news with tommy edmund i'm not surprised whatsoever and that's just the situation that you're in right now i'd rather him start out on the injured list not continue to push it because it seems like this has turned out to be a lot more than they were expecting why push it now Mm -hmm. I mean, beginning of the season, give him some time to heal, and you got a long haul of six months, so it makes some sense not to push him. It does. And we also see Sonny Gray out there today. This is a very pivotal and possibly important bullpen session for him, and they'll be able to evaluate whether, whether or not he's going to be ready for opening day as well. And who's on the mound? It's uh, Lance, Lance Lynn. Lynn. Okay, you need to see him go extended. Mm -hmm. You know, you need to see him throw a little bit more. You're two weeks away, and he's made a start in which he was kicked out of shockingly and uh, you need to th see him throw a little bit more even if he's getting beat up i want to see four to five innings out of him if I, if I can at least four and get his pitch count up to make sure he's ready to go for opening day too and that's our mini spring training report because we did do one earlier and then weather happened and that was a whole debacle in itself I, we did our best dan to do and, our weather reporting and then the sun came out and now it's gotten dark again so oh, get no, ready for thing. more st louis weather yeah those are just blinds danny no, I can see through the blinds. I could see it too. It was sunny a minute ago. That's why you had to close the blinds, I'm sorry. Rock. I, I, I couldn't help myself. I had to. What, what do, do we got on rock and roll? I feel bad about jinx. that joke. But yeah. I had to do that. Good, I, I got to leave. If but... it's Jinx, then it's you two to finish up the show. <laughs> no, Jinx. I knew the old school Jinx. You owe me a soda. How about that? That's fine. I can do that. Okay. Well, guys, something has happened on the East Coast. A, a terrible tragedy, a, a, a theft has taken place. And I don't know how we're going to continue on as the Pittsburgh Penguins put out a tweet a few hours ago. It said, the Penguins announced today that the shipment carrying the Yamir Yager bobbleheads for tonight's game has been stolen on a route to Pittsburgh. As a result, bobbleheads will not be distributed for tonight's game, but will be distributed at a later date. Some mastermind criminal decided there are 10,000 Yamir Yago <laughs> bottle heads, and this is what I need for my super weapon. And now I think we only have a few hours left before the criminal mastermind behind this takes us all out. What the hell's going on in Pittsburgh if somebody steals a shipment of 10,000 Yamir Yago bottle heads? What are you going to do with that? You well, can't you... even resell it because then they'll know it's you. 100%. That's what I was going to say. What's the point? I don't know. I, I mean, you could go off of eBay for the next 30 years with it, I like guess. a very angry Panthers fan is like, I don't like that he won with you guys. I don't know. I don't know. Like, what the hell's going on in Pittsburgh? Maybe Yamir Yager comes back. <laughs> oh. it's, a, it's the long play. It's like, well, the reason why we can't do a memorial one is because he had so much fun getting on the ice for warm-ups three weeks ago. <laughs> He's back, baby. He's played like 50 years. Yeah. He's played like 50 years. The, the Athletic was just running a story about how the Penguins are going to quit trying now after the trade of Gensel, about how like the locker room, like the entire mindset traded. Well, that's how you shock the locker room back a little bit. You bring back Yager. Maybe so. <laughs> Maybe so. Someone from the 636 says... 
Well, I don't want to say the first part. Can, am I allowed to say the first part? I'm no. still every once say, in a while. You can say half of the first part. I can you can say, say the darn second it. half. How no, about you just darn it? it. So you can say darn it. it. Those bobbleheads are the only reason I bought these tickets from the 636. So I guess what they would have to do with the tickets is that you, if you bought the ticket, well, I don't know. Because if somebody's already bought tickets, mm -hmm. say, from two weeks from now, how do you get people to say, well, that's your that's your bobblehead night. You can't do that. Quoting from the Pittsburgh Penguins, all fans in attendance will receive a voucher that includes a one-time scannable barcode that will be required to pick up the bobblehead at a later date. Location and days for pickups will be shared when the team's items are safely located or new bobbleheads are produced and available for distribution. Oh, my gosh. Well, well, and we know how seriously people, I understand. Maybe I, I'm not a big bob. I, I like bobbleheads if it's given to me, but I know I've seen, especially with Cardinals games, how in intense it gets for people trying to get bobbleheads you've seen people get tickets oh yeah where they just go back in and then come back around so that they can collect a bunch of them and then resell them out on the street there's always a giveaway at the ballpark yeah. and baseball you know for people that think it's too expensive it's not i mean no, it's really affordable isn't. i think there's three dollars and 14 cent tickets today in honor of uh 314 day really yeah Am I a bad person that when I see the, the person doing that and I see like their giant, like the black plastic bags that they have outside with all the bobbleheads, that I kind of just want to douse the bag in kerosene and watch it go why up? Why do you care? I don't know why I care. I'm asking why, I, that's why the question was. Because it, it, it annoys me for some reason. I don't know why. Because, it, especially when it's a limited one, because you're screwing over some they family that's going to get there. Yeah, but you're screwing over some family that's going to get there late, and now their kid's not going to get the giveaway. And get the kid's going to be sad. I understand that, but you're doing it just for profit. I'm saying the, you're, you're taking something that is only $3.14 to get, and you're going to sell it for 20 bucks on eBay, and somebody who gets there, not even late, gets there a little bit later than you is going to be bumped out of the 10000 receiving because you are you see this as a, a as a cheap business venture. Interesting rock and roll. Inter Interesting rock and roll. You know what? I'm going to campaign or petition for tomorrow a hill to die on just to see Dan's reaction to this, oh, even though oh you've God. heard many hills to die on. Oh, hills to die on. I thought yeah. you said hill to die on. I don't, I don't know if I have a hill to die, <laughs> on. <laughs> to die on. I don't know if I have oh, one Oh, come right on, now. Rock. You always have one. That was just no, a mini like, one. Yeah, like, yeah, but I, I have plenty of mini ones, but like a a good like full throated like segment long oh, one. I believe like how me. I feel like you can do it. Butchered Highway 40. That was. I mean, that's a gem of a hill to die on. <laughs> I don't. I don't have. I don't. I don't have those just overflowing book. I gotta think about those. Come I don't up know. With them. I, I feel like I give you an hour maybe. Takes and you'll have still come up research. with a couple. <laughs> okay. I found, I had to find a quote from the lead developer of the 40 project as to why it was actually a success, so I could make fun of his dumb quote. I found that. There took one go. Google search, but still. <laughs> 314 still had the one my wife gave uh, or got and gave it to a Cardinal fan friend. There you okay. go. Oh, nice. Very, yeah, no very big nice. deal. See, in the text line, bobblehead flippers are annoying. Rock's a man of the people. This is why we can't have nice things. Those people bother the hell out of me, too. I'm not, again, I there's no logical reason why I'm bothered, but I can't help it that I'm angry when I see it. <laughs> we have to exit the show because the Bloom Party does need to get in here. Great well, show today, guys. Thank you, Rock. <laughs> Thank you, Rock. <laughs> Dan. Pleasure. It was great talking to you guys today. Coming up next, we have a Bloom Party and happy 314 day, everyone.